that the president is a. Okay, we're off. Sorry about that. Let's let's call this meeting to order before we get out of hand here. It's too late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Minutes of reports received and filed. Uh, no. Seems no. like a no day. Liaison reports. Yeah, I know. I mean, we just start off this morning with all no. There we go. Just keep going. Uh, <laughs> just say no, and it takes away all their. Everybody will get up and walk out. <laughs> Is that all we got to do? <laughs> No. No. See? No. No. What are we doing? We're doing their upcoming meetings and events and liaison reports. We've got HBA Christmas tonight, got Solid Waste Management District meeting lunch today. we got a meeting tomorrow too, don't we? Yes. Cool. And you are going to do Warren. Okay. I don't have anything today. We got to be tomorrow, right? Yep. Friday, we got the Renegades. Senator Blunt's listing post 10 to 11. Uh, Saturday, we've got Capital, Capital Gala, Flat Tide. Capital Gala. Yeah. For the arts. You've got a touch. Yeah. I think. I'm yeah. busy. Okay. Gala's this weekend. No, the Capital Gala. Capital, capital Arts. Oh. God. Sam goes to everything. He's a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> okay. You and Steinman can represent. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be there. He was at Capital Gala last night, so. Crazy, they come up to see it. All right, we should. Yeah. We should. Okay, we're good. Better warrants. Hey, where we at? Some liaison reports. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You got off that all time? Uh, no. Oh. So I'm gonna just uh, the RPC had their annual report. And I'll just let you guys take a look at this. But there's some pretty good information in there, and we received some of that. So I'll I'll, pour, I'll just sit that on your desk, and you guys can move it around. And then uh, we had our EDAC meeting at RPC yesterday and uh, Missouri Department of Finance Board has some programs out there that uh, counties and cities can apply for um, and you can get some tax credits so certain organizations if they want to do something you can actually sell those tax credits uh, it's kind of neat I can, I can just let you guys look at this presentation too but so if there's some organizations out there that want to do that, we have to apply for it. But uh, they need to get funding. This is a red point for them to get more funding than they would. Um, so like the uh, well, Special Olympics uh, the city did something through this, and then uh, they were able to leverage those tax credits so the people would get more. So, uh, but, so there's. So the big program they have 10, 10 million dollars a year that they can do in these tax credits and they do an additional 15 million so they could do up to 25 million or so funded. So anyway, I'll pass that around to you. So. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Anything else? Okay, bid award of the 2015-38 medical supplies. Um, you guys have a whole lot of numbers in front of you. Um, a lot of the items on there are alternates. Um, there's always going to be situations where back orders, um, manufacturer price increases that will be passed down to us, um, especially in pharmaceuticals. We've seen that in renewals in the past. Um, for these reasons, I feel like a multi-party award is probably our best option. Um, recommendation is for um, awards the lowest and best per line item as determined by the department placing the order with available material. So is it 
lowest and best with available material, or is there? I mean, I mean that's lowest and best. Let's just hypothetically say a glove. Okay. Uh -huh. So you buy a glove because it's the cheapest, <coughs> and you find that you're ripping through it and it's not doing what it needs to do. So at that point, I would think they probably wouldn't want to buy that type of glove anymore and might want to go to the next lowest. Or if that one's on back order, maybe then the next lowest and so on and so forth. So I think flexibility on a bid with this many line items is really important. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a headache. Correct. It gives us the ability to go to the lowest in each line item. And as mission critical as we are, if the item is on back order, we can immediately escalate to the next one that is available at the next lowest price. It's a lot. <laughs> Which is a lot. It's a lot. I guess back to my question, if it's lowest and best, it's lowest and best. That's correct, sir. I mean, lowest is not best, and best is not lowest, right? So, I well, don't, I mean, that's for you guys to determine what's the best, but. And you've got certain items here you know are best. That's correct. And that's, so, I'm, I, I don't want to yes. micromanage you and tell you you've got to go with Cheaper. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, we, we uh, at all costs to look at the budget first and try to find the whole. But you also don't have to go to the Gucci's and when you can get the cheap stuff. And then uh, and Gucci counter. like the famous name or something. And that like the high dollar thing. Yeah. I would assume that we're we take into account when we're purchasing this stuff and we probably purchase from one or two vendors, but uh, shipping costs. It's all destination freight paid. It should not incur any shipping costs. No shipping costs. Any of them that. For any size order? That's what it should be. That was the business. So specs. if we order one case of something, there's no shipping costs? That's what the business specs said. I'm fine with the yeah. lowest and best, but if it's not the lowest, then just make sure you can justify it. So I made the award to lowest and best with Second. available material. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Considering approving of a commission order titled An Order Approving a Financing Agreement with Hawthorne Bank and Authorizing and Directing the Issuance of a Limited General Obligation Temporary Note, Parkview Meadows Neighborhood Improvement Project. Series Tony, yeah, no, it's that. not much. She knows way more than I do. Five hundred fifteen thousand dollars, Cole County, Missouri, and authorizing certain other documents and actions in connections therein. That's it. Uh, Joe, gets, <laughs> Joe gets to sit here all day and browse through that stuff. <laughs> if I'm going to read through, we're not going to do it right now before the meeting. <laughs> so if we're if I got to read through all of it, we're going to have to punt it. Tony will explain. Yes, so please. That would Tony. Uh, okay. That's what okay. we can pay you up for. Make sure we got this that, temporary right. note. That's not right. ours. Yeah. So. Um, what you have before you seems like a whole lot of documents, um, and it's hard for me to describe that as a simple transaction, I know, but um, all you're doing is entering into what is akin to a line of credit with Hawthorne Bank to finance this um, road project for the Parkview Meadows Neighborhood Improvement District Project. This is all pursuant to the request for financing proposals that Joy Howard, your financial advisor, sent out on your behalf of our health and um, Hawthorne had the, the lowest interest rate on that, you may recall. And so we took all of those terms back, put them into the legal documents, and you have a simple promissory note, but then you have a financing agreement, which really contains more of the provisions. And the reason that you need the financing agreement is because obviously you've got to have some sort of a requirement on the bank's part to continue to advance the funds as you draw them. 
and uh, under the financing agreement, you can draw up to once a month for whatever amount is needed in order to pay the, uh, the costs relating to the project. The order and the financing agreement that you have does go ahead and direct the first draw in an amount equal to 31550 bucks, I think it is, which will be sufficient to pay the full costs of your engineering contract, assuming that's approved, um, as well as just the, um, the closing costs. My fee, the bank had an origination fee, the bank has a uh, attorney fee up to an amount, and so we provided for that maximum amount. So those funds will get deposited in an account that um, has been set up at the county. And then any of the bills that get paid out of that will come back to you for approval just as you would normally approve payment of bills before that gets paid up. So um, the bank, Hawthorne Bank, wanted this to be treated as tax exempt interest to the bank. That's part of the reason why you have the amount of documents and any kind of uh, tax exemption from the federal government, as you know, comes with a whole lot of strings and lots of uh, requirements and you know, certifications and representations about not paving the road and allowing it to become a private road after it's completed and all that sort of stuff. Any questions? Why is it tax exempt interest? The reason that it qualifies as tax exempt interest is because you're a governmental entity and this is a governmental project. And so the uh, bank, the interest that they receive in payments from the county, they get to treat as excludable from their gross income. That will translate translates into a lower interest rate that they offer you on the financing. It's not all that beneficial, frankly, on a one-year financing like this one, but when we get to the 20-year financing to take this one out, it'll be hugely beneficial. Can I ask a question yeah. about the, the timing of the today's note resolution and note versus the issuance of the bonds? What's the timing of that? The bonds would be issued once the project is completed. And when the project is completed, then the county is required to send out a notice to all the property owners advising them that the project is completed, here are the final costs, you have 30 days to prepay your eligible amount without additional interest. And then once you get past that 30 day prepayment period where we know what the size of the bond is you, then the final long term bonds would, would go out and be issued. And um, I'm sure at the time that um, the county will direct Joy Howard as financial advisor to go ahead and solicit proposals again on the long term financing. Basically, can they put those two motions together, the, the order and the sign of the financial agreement? Um, the order does approve the, fi the financing agreement, and so what we would need is a motion to approve the order that, um, Sam, that you, you read, the caption for that <laughs> order. Yes. And so, yeah. you know, we just need a motion to approve that order as presented. So, Section 403, further authority, providing Commissioner, County Clerk, and other county officials are hereby further authorized and directed to execute in all documents and take such action as they be necessary or advisable. But, um, I'm not following where that is. The documents that are going to be executed are in fact the ones that are approved as well as we have um, some closing certificates and, and that sort of thing. And the closing certificates, other paperwork is going to be signed by the Right now. This, this transaction is scheduled to close on Friday. So 
once you guys do make the motion, there'll be lots of paperwork. So well, not lots. Well, that everybody okay. around here has to sign before she can actually deliver it to the bank. Okay. If we could take a break after this, sign that, and then let the Whatever you say. Okay. <laughs> Every. Expert in this area, so that's why. Um, but we need to close. I'm sorry. I did. Oh. I I provided the drafts of the documents, you know, a week to ten days ago, and um, so. You did. You sent them to us. I did send it. I put it out on the agenda. And I would add this that I I read through the whole thing. Now, I'm not an expert, and I'm not a lawyer, but I I know this is the link of it. This really had it. It attends to all the different assurances and needs that all the different parties need. Um, maybe you or Jill could word it better, but you know the the, the huge volume of, of words in here, you know, isn't meant to make it more complicated as much, and it doesn't tie the the feet of the town in your hands in any way. All, all it's doing is covering all its bases, which these big legal documents do. I don't think it's much different than when you buy your house. I've been hurt worse by short documents than I have by the long ones. I mean, when I bought my house, I was protected. My marriage license was one page, and then. <laughs> you know, I have most of my stuff. You know, I'm just trying to put it in black and white. I get it. So, I, I mean, these aren't just documents that we're just making up for this instance. These are things that y'all have used before. It's a boilerplate. It, it is not the boilerplate, but it is a compilation of, of okay. things that we have not used before. Yes, I mean, yeah. um, this particular transaction as being structured as a, a direct loan from a, a bank with um, like a construction loan with the drawdown provisions. To be honest, I didn't have a set of documents for a neighborhood improvement district note like that. And so I have construction loan, tax exempt drawdown loans that I've done on other types of projects, I have neighbor improvement district, notes that were um, direct placements, notes that were offered out in the public uh, as a public offering. And so, you know, it, it was a mesh of those things. And um, I'm sure it doesn't seem like it, but I, I worked very hard trying to slim it down as much as possible. So when you get the long-term bond issue before you in a year, the documents will be twice the length of what you're seeing right now. Um, and But that involves a publicly offered transaction. It's securities. I mean, there will be securities that go out into the general public for sale, um, assuming that that's the way um, the commission decides to go with the financing. And typically, that's necessary on a 20-year financing because not many banks will fix the rate for you out 20 years. So, um, 
So it is complicated, and I, I you know, I, I'm not. I'll find bank is interested in talking to us about, that. about the long term. Yeah, about the long term. Great. Right. Sure. That's great. That's, yeah. yeah. That's that's money. So we, you need, we need we need everything signed, but we used to Friday well, we... Well, here, here's what, you know, when I was here before, I guess, the instruction that I took was that we wanted to move forward with this and get the financing closed as quickly as possible because until the financing is closed, you're not able to get your engineer moving on the plans. And so that's, that's why the time frame is what it is. It doesn't bother me if we... We have Wait Christian on meeting again tomorrow morning. Would would it be any problem if if we we tabled this till tomorrow? No. You know, we could look over and then we'll take action on it tomorrow. That would be fun. That'd be fun. Okay. And that way, Joe can look at. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, my point, Tony's a partner in Gilmore and Bell, yes. and they, this is what they do, and, and they're we, known nationally for this. And we and represent you. Exactly. So yeah, it's, I mean. it's like us hiring Joe Bednar to represent us in the Surtax case. Tony's your outside counsel on this. And sure, I can look it over, but, I mean, <clears throat> it's not my area. Definitely. Today? Yeah. There's something in there that is not correct. You can sue her for malpractice. That. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so I just want to make sure Chris is coming. Oh, okay. He's got some more questions. We've worked with Tony before. I'm comfortable with them. Like Jill said, they're our professional on this. They didn't do a good job, didn't protect us before. We wouldn't be using them again. Any chance that Hawthorne saw a copy of this and they did comment? They did, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, Greg Baxter was in the store yesterday talking to Oh, really? Okay, yeah. I think that would also have a little bit of way to Was that pleasant? Yeah. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. This time? Yeah. Right. And your financial advisor, Joy Howard, has looked at everything as well. First, you know, Joy is looking at it from the financial point. So. You could redo the whole thing if you put the comma in the wrong place. Change everything anyway. So. I guess I'm all right with it. Uh, seems like a lot of worry for <laughs> a dang loan for five hundred fifteen thousand dollars. So you're right. And and if if the bank didn't care about tax exemption on the interest, it would be half the amount of paperwork that you have. And when we do the permanent financing, which will be, I'll make sure you guys get that. Oh, please. Okay. Can you put pictures in it, too? Just on, <laughs> just on the computer, though. Well, I'll make okay. a motion we approve the finance agreement. That's basically what we can call it, right? It, the motion would need to be to approve the order. To approve the order. As presented as presented. Thank you. I didn't want to read through all that. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I will second. Like I will second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> Can we take that little break? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I thought you said there's two things we need to do. Does the order entail all of it? Yes, it does. All of it? Okay. It does.
two sets of closing costs. So this includes the order, the financing agreement, all of those things. Yeah, we already have the machine in today and we'll make that work. 
I don't see the price on that. Yeah, what's the price? The one that was signed last week that should have mirrored that was 412.50. A year? Correct, sir. $412. How much does that copy machine cost now? $2,000. No, but more than that that we had last year. We didn't it on it, like four or five. Yeah. Okay, like there's that now. figure in front of me. Excuse me. How long is it going to last? <laughs> yeah. Like a 10 year machine or a five year machine? Well, I don't think any of them have a 10 year life. I was just going to warn you when it comes to maintenance. They build in less than seeing. Yeah, but when you talk about maintenance agreements, I don't see. Driving we carry maintenance very much on the all our copiers because the cost is so minimal and we can call them at any time and we do it here. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Just 400 we have guys over here all the time. We have them here probably five, six times a year. They should fix it right there. <laughs> Melly needs to quit kicking it. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's a well. <laughs> I know. I think we usually come down to it that necessary you but I just I don't have to like it but I don't think Chris likes them either I'm not going to speak for him but no, I don't buy them I think he has and we, we don't own printers anymore we don't own a lot of stuff that you know maintenance wise we take the three year that comes with most of our computer stuff we don't do any of that anymore but as far as the copy machine goes we do usually do the maintenance I don't think anybody goes with that I mean that's not something we have to Attack here that knows how to take that. Dale can't fix it. No, God, we can start. I can call. Come on, Dale. <laughs> we'll call him. We didn't even get you a cape and everything. You know, you could be the super. I can call him. I like it. I know. I can fix it. Give him my phone. You will pay. I'm going to at least sign the maintenance agreement with KOPI. Second. Oh, in favor. Aye. I don't have time to budget. I know. I didn't say that. Okay. I guess I'm not taking my Bid discussion okay. award for 2015 47 biometric health screening service. This is kind of twofold. Um, <coughs> a few months ago, I don't remember exactly when it was, but the whole county health wellness initiative, that committee, um, we did two bids for the biometric screening to put before you. Not three, actually four responses, but one was late. Um, the low bid is Capital Region. Obviously, they have a local presence and um, anything else we can talk about, but we're looking for direction on where we want to go from here and if we do want to proceed, um, who we want to get the award to. Of course, because you got late, were they even close? I don't open them. The first direction mm -hmm. back. So. I gotta refresh my memory on this where we're gonna supply this and make it available to all the employees. So this bottom line bid is not necessarily what it's gonna cost, just if that's a full participation. Yeah, it was based on three hundred employees. That's so if only half of them participate. And we're looking at it saving us money because it's gonna try to keep people well and keep our health costs down. And just and as a reminder, initially we had talked about doing um, a financial incentive to the employees. Just to be clear, this does not reflect that. And again, when we were with United Healthcare, we had this biometric, and there was a gift card incentive for the employees of the $75 if they did participate in that. What about if we do raises? They don't get to raise them once they do it. Well, yeah. okay. Well, <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. If we're going to do this, then let's go full board. Or punish ones that they I don't do, think because of everybody. Do that. I know we probably can't do it. <laughs> but if you got half the people here trying to keep the cost down for the other half, then there should be some kind of repercussion. Or maybe get, get a note it. that they get an annual checkup at their doctor's and the tests run, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I'm fine with it. I just I, I get aggravated with the wellness stuff. I think everybody will take it upon themselves. And this being a little different coming from our health department, there may be more of an incentive for our, you know, the warm and fuzzy the health department get out there and talk to our employees and maybe get them to do this versus a company that we just hired. We didn't hire. It came with you, Mark. It didn't cost us anything. But they came in and people were like kind of apprehensive.
expensive, you know, just to do it because I don't buy this one. So maybe this first year, if you do, do want to do it, that we can just let the health department run it, see what kind of participation we have once again, and then maybe you can put the carrot and stick out there the next year. As you get older, this is a lot more important. Yeah. <laughs> I think having kept reaching to it is important over it's more like Heidi. Heidi just has diet for their bit it's dietitians that are doing it. The cap region has like wellness navigators, so they'll be a more holistic approach and they can talk to you about your blood pressure to blood back of sensation or any health issues you have, not just your diet. So that was another reason why I like to have a reason to be a little more Heidi. Yeah, they have an aggregate reporting is um, part of the package. And when we tell our neighbors to position, our nurse position, as was indicated last month, we need to have that person oversee the program. I'm trying to recall, I thought we had talked about incentivizing people to do this. Right. Um, and then this reporting. Uh, I, mean, I guess I'm not following what that is. I mean, like, then I have to generate a report for us countywide or per person or what? It's aggregate reporting, so it'll be countywide how many employees are participating. If they show up for both of their counseling sessions. And um, I haven't seen an example before, so I don't know if they'll talk about the referrals made to other physicians or you know what they were counseling about. That it'll be um, aggregate, so it won't be personal information. Now, we did receive that kind of HIPAA re reporting before that didn't name people, but it just kind of gave the you know, where our people stood, just like that. How many people went? You know, do we have a smoking problem here? Do we have an overweight problem here? Kind of those kind of statistics. So, what is this participant no show per person, $44? If the person schedules their appointment and they don't show up, we're still going to get charged for it. And then just the COTA 9 screening and reporting? That is, um, coding is, we can think that or not, that's for to suggest any like nicotine in your system. Like every I think they have a policy that their um, employees can't use nicotine. So they test every employee for it. We can think that or not. We okay. don't have any policies against it. But we can't. That's a problem. We're the government. That's a Fourth Amendment search. <clears throat> so it would have to be voluntary, not mandatory. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's different. We're going to start picking on smokers to back. Some workplaces are pretty good. Well, if you don't do bourbon, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to start testing you at 9 a.m. <laughs> Saying. I'm going to abstain. All in favor? Right. Shouldn't even have been in a talk since saying. 
You just broke the law. Jill, <laughs> call bailiff. <laughs> I get yeah. out of here? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kristen. I think Hilke was just out there. Uh, yeah. Kristen, you take over. Come sit up here. Sam, you're going to need to get rid of that seat on the Capital Region board. No. No, it'd have to be Judge Joyce. Oh. If you're going to abstain from everything that Capital Region is involved with, you're going to have to get out of here. Or get out of there, Sam. you got to make up your mind. What do you want? It's either the kids or me. <laughs> Uh, oh, did I vote? Yes. Yes. Yes, we. You voted. Okay. We're done with that. This is a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not turning. Cisco it. Intrusion Prevention Module Annual License Contract Renewal. Yeah, we got to come up with a little shorter. Yeah, I was, after I started typing that out, it got to be kind of long. But uh, this is uh, a module that fits in our firewall that. Uh, it, that's another layer of security as far as preventing somebody attacking our network. And it's an annual thing that's actually a month overdue, so we just got to quote in on it. So uh, right now it's really not functioning. So until we get this approved and uh, get the new license key put in, then it's kind of sitting there. So it's just one more thing that everything's dragging on with it. Instead of just, here it is, to do it. It's, it's, you know, it's taking a month to get closed. And this module was actually was a result of our outside auditors heading us every year because we didn't have it, so we got it. So okay. this is kind of keeping with their uh, recommendations for many years. So it's just a vendor support, right? Description or whatever. Yeah, it's just like semantic or anything else. It just happens to be for this module. It's in uh, this is called module. I move that we sign the vendor support agreement with CenturyLink. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Any other unfinished business? New business accounts payable review. I'd ask for approval of accounts payable. I'm not going to get one. Go ahead. That was from the. Okay. Pull one of theirs out. I'll make most to approve all of them except for mine. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, but I was going to make a motion yeah. to approve them. I move that we approve accounts available for Jeff. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Assessor's office to discuss adjustments to certified value. Hello, Tom. I've been going back and forth and what he had put on there was the current value and actually and, and this was coming from the head of what, what is it Larry the Housing Commission the anyway for the I'm, I'm the Supreme Court interpretation of that statute is actually when you set that value it's the value before the improvement started so did you all adjust that did Chris tell you about that I uh, guess he did mention it okay um, I mean, what you're not, what you're certifying is today that yes, back then it was worth this. Yes. 
you're not predating anything. And I and I right. sent that to him in an email. Yes. So you've adjusted that then? Uh, you know, 109 on there. Oh, you have 109? Is okay. that the old? That's that, the old. That is the old. Okay. And the new would be zero. Because we're abating. Well, I think you're baiting 109,000 worth of what its current value is, which is what, about 300 something? Well, that is the price value, 109, it's the assessed value. Okay. So it has zero assessed value now? Uh, or that's what it's being yes. assessed on is zero because it's being abated? Yes. So its value basically is going to be, its value is still the value, right? Um, the value will be zero for the next 10 years. <laughs> okay. I wasn't sure how y'all did that on the books. I thought it still had a value of X amount of dollars, but it was assessed zero. I thought it was, I don't know, it seems like the way I was reading it was the abatement would be on the improvements above what it was worth prior to the improvement. That is correct. And um, the property was acquired in 2012. Um, 2013 and 2014, we carried a value of zero on the property due to uh, contamination on the property and the condition of the okay. buildings and obsolescence. So at that time, we decided to leave the value at zero until improvements were made, remediation was made on the property. That makes sense. So. So the abatement's going to be on the complete amount. So that's why the zero. Yeah, I, that was never explained to me. That's why I was just asking. All I did was get a number. I knew you had emailed said you all were going back and forth as long as you were fine with it. value seems like it'd be the assessed value, uh, maybe not be the how it's taxed, but you know, I mean there'll still be an assessed value. And I mean because even the land is worth something, so that would be have to be an assessed value. I mean just because it's a government entity or non-taxable or whatever, takes the value down to zero. Are right, we talking on the Main Street property? Well, uh, just in general, yeah. That was owned by the city before they acquired it. And didn't win. Yes. So that's probably why it had zero assessed value. The city wouldn't be taxed on it. Right. And then when the new owner acquired it, due to the contamination, we left it at zero until it could be remediated because we thought, well, what is the value of the property as is? I guess what my question is, is it's not really to any one of these is there's the appraised value, there's the assessed value, and then you're telling me that some of these are going to zero. Well, I, I can't imagine that any, well, any property would have zero assessed value. Right. As far as the tax books that the clerk works off of, the number would be zero. In our system, there's still a value in the system. Yeah. Even though the property owner, like for example, Lincoln University or Village of Wardsville would be paying taxes on it, in our system there's still a value. Right. But as far as the value the clerk works off of, it would be zero because they're not but going so to you're saying it's zero, I would say it's exempt. I mean, I wouldn't say the value is zero. Yeah. I'd say yeah. that the value is exempt. Uh, uh, that it's a non-taxable. I don't know how you're, I mean, Obviously, you're doing that because that's the way the systems work, I assume. It is in the system as an exempt code right. for it, so the assessment will be 0% instead of the the, mm -hmm. the 19 or 32, depending on the, the, the actual classes of the property. Okay. Just trying to clarify that. I, I'm good with all this. I don't disagree with that. It is confusing on it. I'm okay with it, too. It's got zero value. I can give him something for it. Well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I move that we approve light? the adjustment to the certified value as presented by the assessor. Is that good? All in favor? Aye. Uh, yes. Thank you, Sean. <laughs>
Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Mad when I sell it. Okay. Wait till we sign Osage City over to uh, Chelsea. Chelsea. <laughs> Discussion of sale. Is that going to be February? Is that when the baby's due? Yeah. I think we, can't, we can't do a raffle, we can give her the land, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Discussion of sale or internet modem for EMS dispatch. Uh, back in mid October, mid to late October, the city suffered a complete internet outage. Uh, the internet provider, I'm not sure exactly what happened that caused it, but the entire city was out for quite a period of time and that killed our data push within our dispatch center within EMS. Uh, I sent that out to you guys. This would be a cradle point type modem that would sense the hard line failure and switch over to a cellular data exchange for our EMS dispatch. Uh, I liken it to an analogy of a backup generator. It would just supply data push for the mission critical items that we have within the EMS dispatch, not the entire internet as we know it, but just the mission critical stuff for the data push. Uh, the price for the credit point is uh, $552.49 and then a $35 provisioning charge. And then also we would realize a $40 a month recurring <coughs> data plan through Verizon. Do we have other plans with Verizon right now? We do not. We have uh, currently AT&T. Are they the only ones that can do this, or can we piggyback this on AT&T at a lesser charge? Have you looked at all that stuff? Uh, as far as the data plan that we're looking at here, to my understanding, I have I have compared that, and Verizon offers an unlimited data, uh, or AT&T doesn't. Verizon is actually a cost saving for that. I've actually compared some of our other devices that we have at EMS with Verizon and putting together some ways of saving some money by switching some of those over to Verizon as well. I was going to go that direction too. Yeah, and I've, 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 I've started we're working with that where you, we can cut down those reoccurring costs with our cellular um, devices. Uh, I'm just not ready to, <coughs> not fully finished with it yet. The other thing that helps with Verizon is Cole County is such an AT&T heavy uh, county that, especially on Fourth of July instances, you know there's a lot of AT&T users that bogs down network. Uh, Verizon's as of now it's free, not as overly used, so there's still network available for it. So there's still bandwidth for internet usage. So what we use right now for dispatches, it's a line, landline. Yeah, we utilize so, the county's current provider. Why wouldn't we just get away from the landline and go to wireless? Then you're so relying you're, you're relying on cellular infrastructure as a primary. Okay, but then if we still have the landline as the backup, we don't save any money to do it the opposite way. You're saying you still have to pay both? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. We we would still have to pay both because we are under the county's blanket plan. Okay. No, that's what I meant. Yeah. We're still under blanketly the county. I'm allowed my stupid questions of the day. Hey, you're good. That's one. Yeah, it's just a fail. It'll it'll sense if there's internet out there. around me all morning. And then feed internet into the dispatch. Gotcha. I don't have landline line at home anymore. I rely on my cell phone, but I also don't have, well, I mean, if I have an emergency, I'll just go to the liquor store. <laughs> no, are are you are you filming this? <laughs> you got this? Okay. Can't wait news tonight. I have something to post on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you guys. Oh. <laughs> and we haven't gotten to the budget yet. Yes. Rest of we might. If so, friend, I just need your signature. You want me to bring that up? I don't have a problem with it. Apparently, we need it. There we go. There would be one more picture with Verizon, but I don't, I think I have that in my inbox. We can bring it's it in. Contract. It's not a contract, it's just a PO for purchase. Well, there's terms and conditions attached to it, and I just was able to look at that this morning, and it has that language that just drives me nuts about no warranty, merchantability, yada, yada, adhesion contract. 
but because it's five hundred dollars, it doesn't give me heartburn. The uh, reoccurring data plan we can bring up once Kevin gets that squared away. that we sign the cellular, cellular internet photo agreement. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thanks for looking at that too, Kevin. I know you're pretty diligent with finding the best way to do it, so I appreciate you looking into that. I'm kind of technologically challenged, so I don't know how all that stuff works. I don't rely on you. I just use big words. <laughs> <laughs> we have too many big words and Dale's thing. Okay, first reading of budget adjustment number 16. Well, this is, again, first reading, no action today. It's been $515,000 for the neighborhood improvement project. Just Thank you. for budget Thanks, purposes. We'll hold it for 10 days and then bring it back up again. Transfer for that. And basically, we're budgeting to get the all the money in. So if we did the financing today and you guys approved it, uh, whatever's left in here will transfer over into next year. Christian created a new account with the sales tax for us to keep track of this because it is a little different for us. So. <coughs> okay, approval of committee for citizens for Proposition A. I talked to Ron Medine last night because he's our treasurer. He had checked because we thought maybe the committee was uh, still in existence from five years ago. It's not. And then I talked to Mark, the Cap Regions thing, and I said, did you appoint the committee when you need to? Yes. So um, our Citizens for Proposition 8 committee, our co-chairs, Roger Schwartz, Laurie Helsher, Brad Bates, and Ron Medine is the treasurer. And uh, we need to appoint them again to Got up our half cent sales tax. You still want to do it after sitting here for an hour? <laughs> <laughs> could have put you on the top of this, couldn't we? I'm, I'm good with it. I didn't know if we appointed them or not. So if you talk I, to Mark, I talked to Mark, and Mark said I'm we fine. did, and then that's Ron Dean said that, that's that our former that's good. committee ceased to exist, so we need that's to find a new one. Go with it. So uh, I'm, good, I mean, I'm good with it. I just got a question. So I'm just a little confused that we're appointing. I thought that we couldn't have anything to do with this. We don't necessarily have anything to do with campaigning, or I guess we can. Or elected officials would do what we want to. With it. No, you can't. We can't promote it. <laughs> you can't promote no, it. We can't. can't put any money in it. No, no. I can't donate to the campaign for yes, a proposition. Yes, you can as an individual. But yeah, the county as can. Contract. As elected officials in the county as a whole can. And I can't campaign for it. I can't. Be out there saying that's a good idea for yeah, this to pass. Yeah, do that. Okay, that's what I was saying. We can, yeah, we can have as much to do with it. I mean, because this is so important. And then the there's going to be like an, a, an even larger committee. committee that the uh, county can't put any money. Yeah. That that's I wasn't even talking about the county. I mean, as a commissioner, as elected official, I can go out there and oh, promote it as much as possible. Okay, I was just making sure because we wouldn't even be able to be on the radio and talk about it. So that's not all bad. <laughs> <laughs> Did we do this budget yet? Nothing's been signed. Out on man, collector. I just yeah. got to see my page hats on. The yellow flag. That was, that was a good one, Larry. <laughs> he was throwing his voice. <laughs> Did you make a motion? No. Oh. <laughs> I thought you uh, did. So, okay. I mean, I just, just was unclear of the whole process. So. All right, I'll make a motion that we point to, or we approve the Committee for Citizens for Prop A as presented by Samuel Bushman. That's right. What's your bill on this one? Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Roger. You're still going to do it, right? Yeah, Roger, you can Oh, you're on there. <laughs> as far as the proposal that we presented last week, if you all give any thought to that, I know that the committee they need something to be able to start. Uh, For the amount that we're going to do as co-op projects? Right. I'm in general fine with those numbers. I'm not crazy about the co-op projects. 
when you yeah. to talk Again, about that. The reason know. we do it by the, the categories is so that you all can, uh, you still have the ability to approve the projects that the co-op or whoever the co-op agency is that comes in, you still have a chance to approve it at that time. Well, the list isn't in concrete anyway. We're going to categorically approve it and say this time right. we're going to put on it because we may have something fall off the list right. and move to a different area. Well, and that's what we've got to make sure we do so. We don't want to I promise we spend that much in that category, not on this project. My sure. understanding is we need something kind of firm because they've already talked to Civic Progress because they're actually looking at, at getting that money this year and we have to go make a presentation to Civic Progress and kind of show them what we're going to do with with our money. So we do just the categories though, yeah. not, not specific, yeah. not not specific yeah. projects or anything like that. Yeah. The important thing that folks are asking is, okay, what are you going to do? How much money is involved? And what is it going to go for? So that's, I think, what we're looking for here is to try to get approval of the 31 million total and how much is going to the different categories. Do we need to vote on that or anything or to approve the amounts? I would say you need to at least have a blessing in terms of the county commission. Let's yeah. put it on the next agenda. If that's or fine. tomorrow? No, it's no, too late. It's too late. That's, yeah. Yeah, it's all business. Yeah. Or unfinished business. When do you need it? Right. Civic Progress asked us to bring it to them. And we asked for money to. We, we need to keep it moving so we can talk about on the we talk about tomorrow on the unfinished business or old business or scheduled for ten thirty. Yeah. We're supposed to be done by ten thirty tomorrow, right? Oh, oh. Get Melly to <laughs> set it out right now. I, I'm I'll tell you what, they've already had one meeting I attended. I think you've got another one on uh, December seventeenth and uh, they're they're you know, there's one one good Helsher, Laurie Helsher. My God, that woman. She married. <laughs> into, she, she married. Into uh, the she, she's, she's really. I, I, she married. She's a past man. <laughs> Pardon? She's a past man. Yes, yeah, she really is. Uh, good. And I don't know if tomorrow or next Tuesday because I think you do have to give your direction on the 15% too. I really don't want to talk about it tomorrow. Okay, let's put it on. Let's put it on. Oh, we need next to do it. Weeks. To and, uh, I'm fine with the numbers and the percentages that we had presented before. I don't know how much more discussion we need to have. If y'all want to talk more about that? Because mm -hmm. we had... Let's just do it next week. And we'll All right. Okay. Okay. That'll be before your 17th meeting. And I would also like to put on the agenda because I know December, January gets away from us. We have to have it to the clerk's office before the January 26th to be on the April ballot. So I'd like to put that either on January 12th or 19th as a resolution, the paperwork that Jill will have to work up to be able to get on the ballot. Yes, just so yeah. work. Yeah. 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 Whatever else y'all need on there, yeah. Roger. It needs to be done by the, what, the 16th? The 26th. It has oh, 26th, I can't. Yeah. I was just looking at the two different agenda dates. So okay. If we have to schedule another date and then we can. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So I got Christmas shopping to do so next Tuesday. Crazy. Then we'll be back on in January. <laughs> Make sure we're here. That's the best time to do your Christmas shopping in January. Yeah, this is just. I avoided the crowds too. I, I, did, my, I did my yeah. cyber shopping oh, on Tuesday. Okay, okay we're going to keep going. This we do want to call it Proposition A, by the way. I'm sorry. We do want to call it Proposition A. Yes. There's an advantage to that, money wise. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're legitimate now. It's just uh, disposal of old poll books. Hello. We have our old poll books, and basically we just use them for elections. There's a program on there that we use for elections. So we'd like to just remove that program and then let Jennifer or try to sell them to like uh, no guns. Not so we're trying to get rid of them somehow. Uh, generally, I think it's been the policy to wipe them clean, take windows and everything off, you know, but then that leaves them with no value. If we just take off our program, then we could possibly sell them, get some money back out of them. 
we checked on Doug deals the other day for this kind of a computer, and they were, uh, there were some of them on there, and they were going for around 20 bucks a piece. They'll wipe some out, and they're not worth it. So we were kind of hoping we could just take our program off of it and then sell them with windows and everything still on. That really means no expert computer person could actually find that data. That's why I think they always strip some uh, stories. You know how people can retrieve stuff off of old computers. That's something I have to ask Dale about. It, it, it's all open records anyway. Actually, voting records. Okay. Not social security. It's just the polling places that people vote there, which you can get a list of if you want. Okay. So it's just pretty secret information. It's not to do with MCPR. So. so, how does that? Uh, how does that work? Because don't they have a scanner that scans your photo, your voter ID or your driver's license? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have the scanners. And the so surely that driver's license has to correlate to your name. Right. Is that right? So Bar that's, code that's pretty. Bar code off of it. it brings up your information, like I mean, where you vote, your mm -hmm. name, your address. It doesn't bring up your like birthday. I I'm just wondering if, well, that, yeah, we if do, that driver's be very license careful. code uh, or can be correlated somewhere else to yeah, up that and, information. You know, that would be my only concern. Let's check with Dale you know. and, and make sure that you can do that. If we could, if, if we can get a little bit of money off of them without uh, compromising personal information, then I'd say go for it. But if, if there is, you know, some of these... <laughs> Just wonder how old they were that not the other five years. They are, they didn't have Wi Fi and everything on, so they're not bad, but nope. Yeah. Yeah, other agencies wanted to use them. Windows tablet OS or Check check with Dale. I I think if if, if he can just if he can remove the if he can remove it where where then then yeah we get some some money back. Okay. Okay. I think that's being that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Or, thanks. <coughs> and if I could, my excuse here, I it's not on the agenda. It's just a direction we need. Uh, our postage machine. I'm sure you've seen the many emails that have been going back and forth about the problems we've had with it. We purchased that machine in, what, five years ago, and uh, the county clerk handles the operation of it. So we usually, out of sales tax or whatever, pay for the purchase of it. Um, I'd like to have Jennifer, and they would too, have Jennifer go out to bid, see if there's leasing options and buying. So I just want your own blessing to have Jennifer do that with the county clerk helping them. Helping her. Yeah, because that's, it's down a lot. Of course, you know, you do the way we got the story, you just, you get those rolls of stamps, you just put them on there. It's fine. Do you hear that, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> He's got more bills than I know. <laughs> it's a real problem for us right now. Yeah. We did go get rolls of stamps. Yeah. But we, you know, we have hundreds of pieces of mail no, every day yeah. at this time of year. So. There are cooperative procurement agreements, and I've requested quotes for a couple of those that could possibly speed the process along. The Pitney Bowes machine, which I understand is supposed to be a really solid unit, um, they indicated that they could give us a better price if we fit it out. So I'm not really sure if, if we get these other bids back and they're less, but I guess is that something that's okay for us to decide, or should we? Well, is it an emergency? We've got a bunch of stuff going through. To a certain extent, it really is. I'm it just, it is broke down quite often, and they needed some new rollers. And I think we need to fix it. Yeah, I can't see yeah. I don't think we need to go through a bunch of government red tape to wait for it to get bid for 16 weeks and advertise it and all that stuff. Can we say it's an emergency and get the phone well, bids? If it's a cooperative procurement, we can buy it right now. Or, but she said what you get if we do the phone bids, we might be able to get cheaper. They're right. getting, yeah, that's what Pitty Bowes had said, that if we put it out for bids, they could respond possibly at a lower price than what's reflected on state contracts. Who else doesn't? Um, Datacom is getting me a quote and Rico is getting me a quote. And I reached out also to KODI and they don't do that. 
mean, I'd be fine with saying it's an emergency and let's get this moving. We don't even need to do that if we go with the cooperative procurement and then either that or the pending votes because that's on state bid. But, but if we can get it cheaper than the cooperative procurement. If we want to look at the leasing versus buying, I mean, it's pretty pricey. Oh, there you go. Over the last five center. years. Mm -hmm. And we pay maintenance on it. We pay all these other things on it, even if we buy it. So if, if the history is only lasting five years with a machine. So if we lease it? There are options for that. Yeah. I mean, I can get whatever options we have and bring it. I'm just not sure if, if we're going to bid it out formally, I would get rolling on that right away because I know there's a need. Um, if we are open to doing whatever to move the process along, just kind of What's the cost? Roughly. What's, What's the cost? <coughs> what was that one, Steve? Well, that's it. It's $330 a month to lease it. Yeah. Well, the leasing you wouldn't have to bid then because you don't have. You haven't exceeded the amount in 90 days. So Jennifer yeah. could just call around on that. How much is the machine? Just yeah. a ball purchase. Probably $7,000 or $8,000. Equipment purchase price, 8472 And then it has the quarterly meter rental, 228 and annual maintenance of 27 How much? Total annual cost after the first year, 1839 Initial upfront purchase price, 8472 or bring the point is about five years, I think. Yeah. yeah. So if you, if you lease it, they don't have this cost. So, I'm happy with you on it. You go, you get some numbers on that, because I would like to look at that lease option versus buy, because the lease would include the maintenance. And I asked for those numbers so, a few days ago. All right, all right. Next meeting is that we can procure it. We'll yeah, we're all for your money, Larry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. I just want to keep it moving, because I don't want yeah. It's yeah, ridiculous for them to have to sit down there and stick stamps on there and stuff. And Larry stands there with his tongue out so he can lick it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does keep it from talking too much, though. So. Kind of like that. I like eating onions before I do that. <laughs> we want to know what you have for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee and yogurt. My banana's still in there. What Debbie gave me. Oh, yeah. What she signed. tells me. Uh, uh, can we put that on the agenda for next week or do you want to just put it on the next available agenda and then you can email us the stuff and we can look over we'll do it tomorrow I'd, I'd like you to move faster yeah yeah I'd like, I'd like well, they put on some calls and see if i can modify or get some numbers right away yeah melody add it to the agenda for tomorrow 10 30 if it's something that's yeah. black and white we can approve it for it i'm fine too we're going to be done by 10 30 tomorrow 10 31 now yeah, uh, window replacement. You can send that. Send okay, it yeah. Replacement window color. Um, whatever you guys want to do, go with the colors they have available for the casing or whatever. For the different types of window in the courthouse and the annex, they both have black and they both have the dark bronze. Did you see our emails? Do as match. What's that? Match the color. Just match the right? color. What Just that? match. Which yeah. One? That's, I don't know. That. So I'm colorblind. You're, so you're, I can't you're saying it. that I mean it's either black or dark. Or bronze. dark bronze. Yeah. So I mean, which, whichever one's closest to what's there. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it depends I mean, on what computer you're looking at. On me, they look the same. On my screen, they look almost exactly the same. They have a color chip. Um, they only write that in our. You spread. tell them. Can we just say black. Joyce, she'll wait. Can we just say black and move on. They're dark. Dark dark bronze. Yeah. Okay, dark bronze. Keep the same as what we got. That's what she's asking. That's easier said than done. Is it black or dark bronze? That's easier said than done. Is that bright white, off white, clear white, beige white, snow white, Jeff white, cream white? What other? Who's the other one? It's a comedian. Great white. If you want to get a great white color, great white. I'm talking about diamonds this time of year. Come on, I don't want. I don't really want to see it on the computer because that's not accurate color. That's all we have to go on. And okay, what is wrong with you? Yeah. I didn't say diamond. Us. And you said Christmas shop. You start here. Color chart that you actually has it. the aluminum We're with the color. Now. I don't want to take anybody off on this passing on the message. He told me that they really need a decision this week, otherwise it's going to put them behind. It's fine, but every, I mean, I got some window colors the other day and they had a little thing that had well, that's why I don't want to pick because I mean, all I that's have fine. is the but computer team. If we had that, 
Exactly right. And that's what I don't want to do. Hey Sam, bring it in here. So if he'll, if he'll get us a, a color chip swap, then we can pick up the color chip. Okay. No, are you looking for the color? We done. talking about that? Sam, bring that coffee. Actually, Jennifer, what's more some of them quicker? Yeah, they're out there both quicker. I have a Quaker color chip chart in my truck. Grab it. You know what? I got the big tip. Didn't we have this picked out before? I want a big tip. I'm done. It was narrowed down. Yeah, and the specs were way out there. Take a break before we get the budget discussions. Are we all in budget now? No, I'm still thinking about though. That's fine. Just gotta stop. There you are, sir. Big deal. I think I'm Dude, I'm not done reading it. It is hilarious. Did you see my pictures? Uh, oh, I didn't, hello. I didn't see the article. Yes, is this on? <laughs> I didn't no, see the article. Yes, <laughs> but they have their, their in their Sorry. commission, their health group, the director made a report of what they had done. And I'm I mean, just giving it back to you. you, you, you know, I'll be, have, Did you guys know what you No, but, you know, it, it's it's interesting to see what the state does. And, and then what you do. And of course, they're different sizes, but it's. I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, if Ian is being stressed out with too much work, or not stressed. Uh, you mean Chris? Chris, I'm sorry, Ian. Oh, that's right. If Chris is being stretched out that much, I'm, that's how I'm being stretched out. Mm -hmm. Quit doing on-site waste treatment system inspections. That's a state deal. They should do it. And if someone's got a problem with it, then they just got to talk to the state. The state is trying to dump too much other stuff on us right now, too. Mm -hmm. Can we do the I'm permit? Uh, what's the permit? You can copy the postage. Yeah. It works out okay whenever you drive out there, you look at it, everything yeah. looks good, but then when you have that head. I know, they spent a lot of time on it. But, 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 if I had $1,000 worth of hours in last night, not the mention administration. Then I probably did, too. Then I probably did, too. So, I, I'm sorry, I think that's a state issue. If they want to send us some money on paper. Well, there's a lot of things that really are probably our issues, but we're, they, they are our issues. I mean, it should be state, it should be. And we get, and have, yeah, and I'm not making arguments, but we do get some corporate public health money for that. We do get a push fee. And I truly believe that because we do it, it's done. Well, the state won't do it. Well, they would do it when they got to it. People would get done, would get turned away, then they just put in the system. We do it better because we do it locally. I think if there's borderline ones and they got questions what they can and can't do, yes, it is. So we come out there and say, yeah, here's where you can put it. We'll mark it out. I mean, Chris did a very good job working with the one that we had problems with. Okay, well, things got moved a little bit because uh, that's what the installer had different ways he looked at it. We got to take care of it. But 
Yeah. If somebody comes in there and they're putting it out in the middle of nowhere, it really doesn't matter. There's no reason for anybody to have to wait one second for an inspector to come out and say, okay, it's fine. Uh, I think it should be complaint driven. The last email, the one I sent you, I don't know. There's a whole lot to it besides the state passing stuff down to us. It's very frustrating. I didn't even really get to look at the one that you sent us. I don't know why we're not getting those fiscal notes back in November. I don't know either. Because well, I thought we were getting fiscal notes for everything. Yeah, you're doing the inspections yeah. to us, and yeah. that will be huge yeah. because they have to be like right. national certified. You have to be our end goal along, so we have to have our own specials in it for our end. Every single inspection, back, back, 21 of Boone County, I looked it up. Yeah, I was going to say there. And they said it, I mean, Boone County estimated that it takes 80 hours to do one. Because of the inspection, and we would get reimbursed. Well, yeah, a little bit. They have some funds, but if it was appropriate, we would. If you guys said an RN, an RN, we can't get an RN. Yeah, but you don't have even the weekends at home. No. <laughs> you know, we're trying to sell yeah. Anyway, I just thought I'd be able to That's pretty much where I'm at on that. I'm not adamantly opposed to it, but I just some of the stuff that the state hands down to us and tells us we have to do. Okay, that's fine, but we're going to send you a bill for it. I agree. We've been trying to back when Senator Keogh came, I came in and showed him how that public health money has gone down like $9 million in two years. It's ridiculous, the cuts that they have to pass on to the local public health. But if we have to do it, if we have to do it, we have to do it. Yeah. We don't have to do anything. Why do we have to do it? Yeah. It's an unfunded mandate, Sam. What color are they now? Yeah, I mean, the, the doors downstairs look more like <laughs> bronze. Because they were done at different times. Well, they're not, hitting, they're not getting the sun. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't know how. Yeah. Yeah. Or they had to get more sun. I like the dark bronze. Yeah. Give that. Yeah. yeah. If you want us to make it a choice. I, I, I need the tinting of the window, too. Oh, the tinting? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh, my thing is this color now. Those windows are tinted really hard. They're, they're all tinted? I think they, they need to be tinted pretty good to try to keep as much sun out yeah, as they get they baked. They, he said that email yesterday, he said that him and Gregory take the tent. There's a. Oh, let me. Exactly I think the bronze is. Well, bronze with that dark bronze, I think, is what I would lean towards. Or do the black with energy gray. I thought there was a little bit of a brown and bronze tint to it. Brown, dark blue. I don't know. Don't we have somebody to pick this stuff out for us? <laughs> George Did Wilson, blah, blah, blah. We discussed the glass grade previously. Quaker has a tinted, insulated glass unit for all windows that will outperform the current windows by leaps and bounds. So it sounds like that's done deal. Okay. Yeah. Whatever one that works for them. Yeah, I yeah, I think so we could uh oh my gosh. I think it's bronze. Bronze going twice? Bronze? Dark bronze. Dark bronze. Okay. That's fine. Yes. Yes. Thank no, you. That was, was okay. Dark bronze. Okay. Run Yep. <laughs> I am. Run them, Dana. <laughs> anyway, you have other questions. I was just saying if you have questions about my Okay. Yeah. All right. Mom says Tom's got less. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be out here in the new. Yeah. I was hoping that's happening. Maybe next tomorrow. Yeah. I think I think we. I I really like to be out here in the. Gosh, we've been busy. Well, this weather's nice. People are getting out shopping. I don't know what you say. Um, but I have. Yeah, I'll be heading here. Well, I'll see you if I'm on the way to Columbia. I'll give you all. Did we adjourn for a minute? No. No? Okay. Sure. I didn't even go.
Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, this will get over. I'll sing out in a minute. Okay. Okay. Where we had Dad? Wherever Mom says Mom. we are. Okay. <laughs> well, we're, we'll go to Capitol and we'll say salary to the end if you'd like. Uh, I tried to do that list for you. I'm sorry. I was going to send it to you and I forgot. I sent it to Christian to look over and make sure I didn't forget anything. So if you want to go out to your F drive under. Um, yes. Get caught up there. So it's not to learn this is in five years. Yeah. One is another sales tax? Yes. Yeah. I don't see budget. sales tax. Commission, commission's budget? 16. 16. Oh. Yeah. Sales tax? Yes. Yeah. One. Yes. Yeah. And I created a new sheet there for you. Oh, I, did, I, I know you guys are <laughs> We're not. I mean, oh, okay. you gotta use the uh, you can watch Did you see that? No. I don't want nobody falling asleep. A E R Q. Well, you can go up there and sit up here. Nobody else in here. I know I shrink this down to where I can get a little more on page. Oh, there it is. Never mind. No, this, this took me a minute. All right. I have to ask it in the show. So. You know, we talked about the different funds and where capital comes from. The first one that we're uh, not as unusual for us, the general fund. Um, we're going to have a purchase order out there. We actually do already have a purchase order out there. Yes, and a transfer made for the windows from courthouse. So you can see that coming out of that fund. Now, capital sales tax, again, this is your 15%. Um, current projects that we're still working on doing the juvenile, the transfer switch in the jail, security, the website, voting equipment, uh, law enforcement, the Sally Port door, we have an estimate, and uh, the 911 dollars that we talked about. Again, these ones in blue, we could potentially take those out. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Sure. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> But you could potentially take those out of different sales tax if you want. Um, then you go down to the list from all of the people that had requested it. And I did it by building. So annex building, priority A for um, building maintenance was the upgrade of the HVAC system. And it's all up to you guys, and that's an estimate right there. And then you see his other ones, and priority was A being the most I want to see a thousand dollar chair. Well, that's the recorder piece, and I think there was more than one. <laughs> okay. I think there were other items. Okay. Some kind of dry erase board. Well, I think, I think a chair was a thousand dollar, if I remember right. Well, then, I mean, so that's the list, and you can go to the Carnegie building itself. Of course, you put all of those items as a priority because the condition there. So, um, and estimates on cost. And again, then you go to the courthouse, and you have the A's are here, and all of them were A's. And the treasurer asked for a uh, refrigerator condenser, and then the public administrator wants some show in that building. Health department, you know, this is all depending on our five year plan, but these are in order of A priority. What five year plan? Well, you know, Start that <laughs> I mean, what, what your own vision is. Yeah. Where there we go. I'll send vision. Mm -hmm. And then the health department, you know, talked about replacing the 2007 board space. Um, and the possibility of using maybe you know, some that um, We'll have to work out the details on that for uh, purposes of an enterprise fund versus. So I guess we bought that out of capital, so maybe we would have to. Um, oops, sorry. And then um, juvenile. The juvenile, the next building. Um, the only really main thing that Greg said at first was the pizza table. But these are shortly behind, I'm sure. And depending on what you do, this was an estimate on the parking lot. Again, 
and I never really, Larry wanted to go out there and look at it and give you a real estimate. This is me pulling it out of the sky. I think Michael said he thought there was a ramp. Yes, and potentially there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I said over there. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then the Shepherd's Building, I know. Well, back to the general. Sure. The generator system. Really, be like two different numbers. Not because we got a price to put pigtails, we've got a generator. Yeah, we've got a generator. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm just so right pigtails there. If that's a, I'm, the reason I'm bringing that one up is because I'm going to look at a lot of the A's first and I'm going to work backwards from there. Okay. And with pigtails, to me, <laughs> I thought it was a pretty expensive to put pigtails. 35000 or something, though, and then like that. A lot more than I thought it should be. Okay. And that amount is. I think 10 would be max as it would. We did it twice, and it both came in at the 60,000. Oh, no. With the generator. On those pig pails? Yeah. Just the pig pail? I'm sure. That's why we declined those bids those two different times. I was thinking it was 35. I thought it was 30. All I could have broke that. Okay. That's where that figure comes from. It's nothing more than the pig pail. Okay. So you had that noted out there. Yeah. yeah. All right. So then the shepherd's building. I think you were talking to Craig about that, Chris, about the heat units or whatever they said. Well, yeah. Well, we were all talking about that. I mean, I'm, I'm not replacing any hanging heaters. Let's see how cold it is. Yeah. And that's the anyway. So. Yeah. And then the table. we put in there to start with weren't that good quality. They've actually held up for Well could we use like those lifetime tables in there, like folding tables? I mean are they maybe I like, you know, I'll find those folding tables. Well they make those lifetime they tables that have some tables. kind of work here or whatever that they're going to stand up to he wants to Yeah but just so because they say lifetime mm -hmm. doesn't mean they're lifetime. Yeah. We got like a one year or something. <laughs> But that's the name of them. I know what they're you're called, saying. They're called lifetime in the brain. I want to get to one that if there's too much weight set on them, they will shock you. That will keep people from sitting on them. Because <laughs> that's what hurts some tables the most is people sitting on them. And I'm as guilty as anybody. So I'd be the first one getting shocked. And so we talked about sirens. I, I don't know if that was two or one, but I had I think that was one. I think he said like they had one, one siren. Yeah, he said. You can put that as a Z. I'm just one though. Oh, it doesn't matter. I heard the right behind you. Well, they talked about 23,000. I thought you said. I haven't put out 35. I thought you said that was I, I, I have additional sirens, and then it puts that in two with a question mark. Okay. I only heard one. So. It'd be cheaper here by a cell phone. Okay, so that comes to if you did everything. Our pager. Tornado. Go away. Well, I do some of those. If you did everything, it's 1.5. We're going to skip over. This is the computer list that Dale had given you. Okay. Um, so that is a hundred four, one hundred forty-one thousand. Now EMS capital. That was again the things that um, Mike came up with. But just looking at the capital for uh, for the eighty-five percent, which our current balance estimate for. Uh, 2016, we have about 1.8. Current projects and the computer services, please, if you did all those other projects up there, uh, the total expense would be 2.4. We're short if you do all those projects by 583,000. You're talking about everything from A to Z. Mm -hmm. We ain't doing everything. No, from A to Z. can't. Right. Right. And if you okay. only do Make sure priority, we're on the same page here. Yeah. If you only do priority A list, you're at 111,000 over. We can go back and take some of those A's and make these too. On the computer things, do we need all of those? Yes. Yeah. Even the assessor stuff? Now we can talk about that, but assessor fund, we have to buy stat statutes the way Julie's playing. We have to pay for this. So I don't know. 
What's what's the treasure in two HP small form factor PCs? To replace their current PCs, that's all they're They probably okay. have the so the old they're in a replacement cycle. Right, right. that's what most of this is. Okay, he's I mean, just not wanting a couple of laptops or something. Nope, but nope. these ones yeah. in green, yes, blue, online, those potentially could come out with a parking fund. But again, it really, you know, EMS, we could take that out of capital for EMS if you guys could do that. And that was the uh, oh. backup. Not Absolutely. EMS is server? Yeah, definitely. I come well, out of EMS. Um, that is the backup for um, doing one with tape and going to uh, cloud based thing that they always talk about. That's the way I. Which one was that? I'm sorry. This is 12. I'm 68. Yeah. 68. Oh, the 12 1. 12 1 30. If it has anything to do with the MS, then I think yes. Put I that in there, not in the capital improvements. Yeah. I just want Dale to be in charge of those kinds that's of things. That's fine. You know, that's the problem we have. We're in charge of the budget anyway, so that one's different than saying, okay, it's going to go into the tax maintenance fund or whatever. I mean, just because Mike doesn't bring us his capital request, I mean, if it's something that they need to do, it's, you know, And we can also do that software with related. Words. While we're on computer sales tax here, uh, see. computers, the, I'm going to go back to the poll books. Do those poll books, those, those basically just go many computers, right? But they're okay. five years old. To oh. reuse them. You might like having a big computer in here for doing this stuff. Like we've got meetings, we could just use some little pole books in here. I mean, you don't have a laptop for you, Debbie, besides that one. You have one that you use when you take home, or you take that great big stuff home. I use my one at home. I have one that's Oh, you use your own one after that. Okay. I just think we can reuse them somehow. If we go out and try to sell them for 20 bucks, I'm fine with getting something for them. I put them back on the bed. We will, we'll read it. Get my cap region stuff, I get the store. If we get rid, get rid of those, I wouldn't mind having one to take to, because we have meetings down like at City Hall and get in on their wireless and have it. It's easier than carrying this big thing around. I don't like making copies for meetings all the time, which everybody's getting to it now. Hey, you want a copy of the agenda and notes, make it yourself and bring along with you, I'll do it. So, I just, that's just me personally. Yep. Sorry, I got off on that. Well, you must talk about public works there, Debbie. EMS was getting all geared up, and the health department kind of uses those, I think, and then was, um, this is well, visiting. Anytime we do surplus property or try to dispose of yeah. something, they should be going out to the departments first and saying, hey, is there anybody that can use this before we try and sell it? And, that, and I would yeah. feel a little, little safer doing that if our other departments are using them. Well, I can tell you that the sheriff's department has every gadget in there. Under the sun, so. And that becomes all of that becomes very frustrating for Dale because a lot of this equipment is old and they'll get viruses on them and then he could spend a day getting a virus off of one of those. And it's fine, that's his job. But how many PCs does each person really need? What's he getting a virus on it for? Because they connected to something that shouldn't have been there. So you're saying public works could come out of their yes. sales tax? They don't, they don't have a sales tax, but they can pay for it. With. It would be out there out. They're out of 200, but I'm not exactly sure where. Yeah. Would they have it in there to pay for it out of? Right. I don't. They, they have. have a computer line, but you need to pull up their budget. I, I'm pretty sure we have this list of things already in that computer line. That I don't. We don't know. I don't think. I don't need to go there. I mean, I just leave it in in there. I mean, but EMS for me. Of the EMS okay. and uh, public works we can pay for. Uh, I'm good with doing all those. Uh, My suggestion would be to so leave the list. I know the 141 is definitely things that we need, right. but this is also where if a computer goes bad in the middle of the year or a printer goes bad in the middle of the year, this is where most likely those things are coming from. This is the only well, but I thought, no, I thought Dale had $200,000 in, in the budget and, and his to spend. No. This is out of his particular budget. He has 180-some thousand, but it's already scheduled for maintenance on all the other software. Okay. So I, I think you need to leave a cushion in here for those unexpected things. You know, if the server goes down and you're talking, then 
ten thousand dollars in the middle of the year to replace the server. I mean, it's not like it's. Well, I don't see us spending all the money, so I don't know. I mean, are you just wanting to leave a placeholder? Yes. Of right. Twenty grand. Uh, no, it's one hundred forty thousand total in computer services. <coughs> but I'm saying that you probably need to up that a little bit and leave. One fifty. One fifty. I think we need to take EMS and Public Works out. Public Works has their own tax fund. I'm going to pick on them just as much as I'm going to pick on EMS, uh, Sheriff's Department, Assessor, anybody that's got their own fund coming in, I'm going to pick on them the same. I think we got to do that with our own department. So. But I do want to caution that we do get money back from those funds for computer services. We base that on what the maximum set says, not only bail's cost, well, how much space they are, and on purposes that we make. So one way or the other, it's just not washed anyway. Because oh. either we're going to charge them for it. That's even more reason to put it on there is because we're getting money back from them. Public works we're not getting money back from them. Yes, we are. We charge them computer services. So one way or the other. I mean, oh. EMS, EMS has its own sales tax that has money set aside okay. for capital costs. Okay. Public Works is paying a fee to General Fund for computer services to okay. cover their portion. Okay. So it okay. Makes Stop before you go too far. <laughs> so we, can't, just we can't take the assessor's portion and take it out of the assessment fund because he's paying for computer services as well. Okay. I don't know. I, I, we could. It's just it would reduce that amount for next year. Do we charge EMS the same computer fee like we do public works yeah. in their fund? Yeah. We charge the enterprise, enterprise. fund, but we don't charge they're, they're gonna their they capital. capital. But if we're charging them, then, okay. Explain to me the difference between public works and EMS then. We have a sales tax for EMS that could be used for however that ballot was issued, which we particularly use now to fund the enterprise fund. But we do use it also to buy capital. We use it for first responders. We use it for 911. This is, could legitimately be paid out of that fund. Road Bridge, they just have what you want to call an enterprise fund, an operation, and they have to use it all for that. They don't have a sales tax fund feeding them. They have a tax. They have a property tax. Property tax uh, levy on them, but it's all in How do they not have a sales tax fund? We have an absent sales that's tax. In the, that's in there. <coughs> I'm just talking about their uh, fund for we, a couple of We've so never we used people. their 85% to buy computer yeah. things. The only capital things we've used for their capital improvement portion of the sales tax is actual equipment and actual road. We've never used it for computers or anything like that. We never really had to at the works. So, I mean, we buy the software. I mean, they have some. Most of the time, if they need a computer or something, Code Works is buying it. But I think they didn't get the heads up on this 12000 so it is not currently budgeted in their budget. And this is our IT guy saying this is the right thing to do. You know? So it's not it's not them driving it, it is IT driving it. Everybody got money. If anything, I'm okay with this. I think. The EMS out, but I, I'm not. I think I'd leave the public works. And um, if we're going to take one out, I think we'd take both out. I mean, I understand your explanation. I don't. Uh, maybe I don't understand. I don't think I'm going to take an EMS and leave the public works too. There you go. You got two of them to do it that way. Move All on. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, can but, I read the bottom line at 140 or 150? I'd make it 150 yeah. and just have a contingency. I think, yeah. I mean, but we, you know, I you got control of that, whatever. I mean, we're not going to spend it all, but if you want a placeholder, that's fine. That's it. And really, that's all I want within the budget on the whole capital scenario is a placeholder. Um, we control that also for the right. Or something right. Right. Can. I'd like to go ahead and talk about which ones we want to try to do. Oh, okay. We get Jennifer. Do we want to start at the top and just work our way down and just go yes, no, maybe, and then go back to the yeses and add them up and then yeah, that's fine. Yeah. the maybes we can talk about? Good with that. Okay. Obviously the ones that are already there, do you have any interest in me taking the generator switch as the law enforcement fund? Or we, since we started that project, should we just pay that project? And the, that being the same as the Sally Fort Worth. So that's in the old deal, no. it's not in their building across the street. 
the old. Yeah. yeah, leave it. Leave it in ours. Leave it in ours. Yeah. Okay. Um, the 911 call, see, would you like that to come out of the EMS? Whenever that bill comes, the EMS uh, sales tax. Half's coming from there and half from the sheriff? No, that is for extra equipment. That's not the answer. This is for their equipment upgrade. Yeah. It's a one right. time. And right now it's not put in. This is totally EMS related? Yeah. It well, it's no. the radio upgrade. But for that, the one. that EMS can be, the EMS capital does not have to be just EMS enterprise fund. It is. Emergency you, medical services is how it's termed. Yeah. I think you would be safe to take it out of there. I don't think there would be anybody, you know. We pay for 911 cost out of there. So why wouldn't this upgrade come out of there? We pay for 911 cost out of the sheriff's budget. We will be. We will. I know. This is directly related to their services, right? So you it's you, law enforcement and EMS, right? You could split the cost there also. Yep. I just need to know if you want it out of our capital and somewhere else. My feeling is I take half out of EMS. And I I mean, well you take the other half out of the sheriff, but then it's just either more money we're gonna have to put in there or depending on how all that hash is out. Um, and we're already hitting him for the his half. He hasn't been paying forever, and he still don't have an admin fee in there yet either. Uh, so we can put it in there, but <coughs> I don't want to give him any more money to just put that in there. I don't know if it's, is there enough in his contingency that we could sure have a contingency in this? We could take it out of his contingency, lower his contingency, or something. Is that what you guys want to do? I mean, I don't know. I don't want to sit down and talk to him about it. I think it serves both. I'm sure he's listening right now anyway. I'm going to fill out his chair when we want to add more bills to him. But I'm, I'm huge on they've, they've got their funding and we need to find a way within it to make it work. Uh, Greg has been doing a good job the last couple of years. Is there somebody, saw some black numbers in here. So. As far as you guys have contact with 911 that can give us some breakdown of those calls and we can make sure that the 50 50 split is correct. Um, to kind of go through the total calls that are coming in to 911 for the county, and we can see that the 50 50 split is the way we should be doing it, and it's not. So it turns out it's more 60% right, EMS, 40%. Right. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank goodness. Uh, I thought we had that somewhere. Wheeler was supposed to be getting me that, but I know he's been he's, yeah. tied up. So. Yeah, and I this mean, is a one time cost, too. You know, on this one, I'm fine with us. Working with the sheriff's fund on this one, you know, three years down the road, if they got to do some kind of upgrade again, I, I might be on a totally different page. But to move on from this one, we want to put half in EMS. And us put half. And then have us do half from the capital. That's kind of where I was at, but I'm fine with that on this one. Yeah. If the sales tax numbers keep going up, then we're in good, good shape. But. So then if you want to go down building by building, we can talk about it now. I mean, this obviously won't be a red light for to start bidding unless you want to. My biggest thing is there's a lot of things that come up in the year that we need to be having contingency for. So if we say yes to them right now, that doesn't mean go bid them tomorrow. Okay. That's <laughs> my say on it. We still have to make this money over the next are we putting a lot of money currently into the HVAC? Are we having issues with it, or it's just the age of it working in that heat? This building is, I can tell you, it costs us more money to heat and cool uh, than the courthouse does. But is, is that going to get better with new windows and things like that? Probably will, so. I hope so. I would mind waiting until the windows are done before we do the control systems and see maybe if that had something to do with it, if you got air moving in and out of places they're not supposed to be. And that's why I do anything in my office. I mean, the bigger ones I think are harder for me to swallow. Uh, 
you know, obviously we're not going to do the carpet and paint here in the annex until the windows are done, so that will be a later next year decision. Um, so are we leaking on the roof? I think we have some roof issues on the annex and Carnegie. Uh, okay. that, that maybe we ought to try to fit those together. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's what I was saying on some of the bathrooms. And then uh, I know there's several people that are needing chairs, and I'd like to see us bid those. And I, I'm not going to give people a blank check to go out and buy a chair. But you can do all the office furniture. You can do the credenzas, the bookcases, and the chairs. Mm -hmm. Get them all. Well, and it could be that uh, we get a better price if we buy so more. Right. Know, if we get a five to chair that everyone would agree on, you might get a better price yeah. if we buy well, ten chairs versus buying one you know, chair. No, I don't think everybody gets a choice. I think we find a good chair and we decide what chair they're getting. I know Steve has already got one coming. I think so. And I told him just because I had, I said I just want to see what we got. Right. Before it goes. To a new one. Yeah, MB, MBE. They, that, they uh, make sure. No, they have a they have a whole sales force that go out to the old National Guard on industrial and look at all the stuff. I mean, you can get plaques, you can get, but they have furniture, okay. they have flags, they have. So yeah. Um, I'd like to see us you know, knock out some of these smaller ones, like upgrading light pictures. I think that would be a good project to do. Uh, that exterior picture, the interior picture? I think it's interior. I mean, even this uh, replacement of the boiler and pumps at Carnegie, you know, it's not a huge dollar one. Thirty-five thousand. And again, these are investments. Right. I, and if I could, I'm just going to say this because yesterday afternoon I got the, the low perm renewal and I put it on the agenda for next week for you guys to see. Um, in talking to Rick Don um, and going out, I had to fill out a bunch of paperwork on our buildings and Greg helped me with that about the, the age of our roofs. When they were replaced, when we fixed them, everything. HVAC, HVAC building. Mm -hmm. um, Rick had a hard time with anybody that would uh, want to bid if we haven't touched our roof at some point in the last 15 years. And I'm like, well, okay, but roofs are supposed to last sometimes, you know, 15, 20 years, especially a slate roof like this, that's the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. Lifetime. Yeah. yeah. But he said at some point they needed to that we had done some work on it. Because I guess in the insurance market, that is... Well, we have done work on that one. And I said that in different spots, yes. Right. So, but he was more or less looking at the Carnegie building. Yeah. Uh, and he was looking at the health department building. So if I could just say that, he doesn't think Bokram came in with a great renewal. Just so you guys know, I haven't got it all figured out, but it's like a 2% increase, and that's the recommendation we're going to go with. But, they are looking at that kind of stuff. But well, I think we're going to have to scary. replace the roof on the health department next spring. Yeah. But I know it was Greg patched it, and I think I think he had Weathercraft do it. They said it's it's pretty well shot. So and they were uh, looking at the Carnegie and health for sure. Um, that doesn't mean that when we bid it next year, the premium would be lower if we replace the roof. I can't say that. So as we go down here, I mean, I think we have to look at replacing the handrails over the courthouse. And those, the uh, I've had more attorneys coming in who are, in fact, uh, Donnell's husband was saying that we're, we're, uh, we could be held liable those sidewalks. I mean, the repair and painting of the walls in the courthouse, I mean, $125,000. We don't want to do any of that to the one. No, I don't. Yeah, well, I, don't I realize that, but I mean, I'm just thinking, are they in that bad shape? Or well, I think I it's because they're the plaster walls. Yeah. And they have a detailed painting. I mean, it's 
not just like let me go in with one color and paint it purple and borders and it's painted. It's not plaster. Huh? The bad thing is that plaster. Because you start chipping some of that away so that you can fix it right. And then it falls off. Yeah, and then you got a big piece to replace. And I don't, that's going to be something we really look at too. Some of them we may just want to pick a room and fix a room at a time. Well, like Maryland, it was all done. Right. Uh, so. Yeah. That 125 should go a long ways, though. That's I would a, say, yeah. That's a huge number there. I won't even know if I would put that as an A. I think I would put that as a B, C, and D, maybe, yeah. to do over you know the next 10 years. I think the sidewalks, just because it gives it curb appeal, too. But then, before we do that, part of it is, when we decide what we're going to do with the old jail, we're going to go up with it. Some of that included some sidewalks on the, I guess the uh, west side, around mm -hmm. the northwest. Yeah, so maybe we look at doing the high street. The steps and everything are really bad. But I think when you look at doing the high street side, maybe this year, parse this out and do it little by little. Maybe this year do the west side sidewalks. We need to do something with, high the, street. with the, the public sidewalks out there too. Talked to Sam Gaines when we were over at Pioneer Trails, and I said you need to come up and take a look at those because again those are yeah you got a warning. So well I know, yeah. but I mean just uh, we, we need to do something with those because again you're you're just asking for somebody to. Who did the sidewalks fall under? What's there in? Well, according to the city, there's city sidewalks everywhere else except for in front of the courthouse and then there are ours. So and they won't clean them. That's Greg, they stop at the library. When you're watching the, the watching them clean snow, they stop at the library, and then Greg has to do hours to the alley. But then we had one of our security guards last winter when we had snow. You know, they, they walked through the alley, fell on the. So we, kind of, I kind of jumped the city, and I said, you know, that's your liability when somebody falls in the alley. Even though, you know, and because uh, it wasn't in our parking lot, it was in that alley. So it's. Well, it's, it's their liability for if someone falls down, they should walk more carefully. <laughs> well, you can't push the snow everywhere. No, no. Be bitching no. Because the right street tank closed. Well, I think that alley, that alley, alley got the alley back needs to be resurfaced. Yeah, but. Next thing you know, they're going to have to pay. Right, Debbie? I'm I'll tell you after going down to that little one, that's the first time Sam's been to the county. I, have we gotten any bids on sidewalks? No. Uh, so I like, yeah, treasures, credenza, and refrigerator, I'm okay. Probably administrator shells or credenza or whatever she would want. Just as long as we kind of did that stuff and it's not like Corbin. Well, he should be able to get a mini fridge for like $100. Right. <laughs> You go to Walmart and they sell those for, for the apartment, you know, for storm rooms that are and eighty nine. Did they not have a break room in the courthouse? They got the jury room. Uh, no, we can't count they, that one. They used down on the second floor, back in criminal. There's a break room in there. Yeah, that's one that the marshals and bailiffs use. No, the this is in criminal, in room 200 across from Children's Courtroom. Back behind. You have to go through that office. I think I that's, may have a little refrigerator in my office. Here's my deal. If I want to have a little refrigerator in my office, I'm not paying for it out of county for it. We did we years ago on I know I'm old, but if you want a one you brought your own one. Well, Except that's for like, you know, when we came what? over here then we got got this one. The county court has one. And I don't know. We need one central Cafeteria, like I just have trouble paying the yeah, for a refrigerator in there. I'm going to put it that way right now. I, I probably will vote against the refrigerator. If they want one, they can go get them a, a cheap one at a rummage sale. I don't care what they do. If I want one in my office, I'm going to buy my own. But the problem is electrical. People will keep plugging that stuff in. And well, we didn't say there's going to be a plug in. Oh. So they. <laughs> Do you realize what that does to your electric bill too? Just those, your little space heaters, 
I always enjoy getting my bill after you have any Christmas lights at all run into because that jacks your electric bill on. You put up Christmas lights? Yeah. Okay, let's keep moving. Oh, well, well, we can decide on the refrigerator later. Get myself okay. something nice for Christmas. Usually some socks. Okay, health department. Okay, that building. But we talked about the roof. But I mean, do I need to mark that? I'm just going by it. Was we did? They had a pretty bad leak. That's yeah, I think Greg, you can fix a leak too, though, Sam. But yeah. he's got it down as a B. So I'm not. If unless it's needing to be replaced. My roots had a couple of uh, shingles come loose too, and I patched it in. I'm going to get as many more years as I can. It needs to be replaced, yes, but I'm gonna, I'll patch it before I put another, you know, five grand into it, into it for now. But do we have it on the list for two years from now or five? Well, that's just the thing. We don't. Yeah. I mean, we just prioritize them as A, B's, and C's. We don't necessarily put them in at what year we're going to do what. Uh, and we can definitely just put like. 400, 500,000 in there, and then uh, let Ray come back and talk to you guys about this. Yeah. Well, the B I would venture that B was was done before it started leaking the way it was. And like, well, again, 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 like I said, the weather craft came up and looked at it, so it, it might be that you just... He turned these in back in September. Yeah. Uh, uh, what are we doing? Yeah. Well, I mean, this kind of gets back to the same thing as Carnegie and that, you know, there's some some huge costs there, and so you know, are we going to fix up the building, or are we going to try to find help a place to go? Um, and so, you know, we talked about getting them a spot, but I mean, there's there's going to be two hundred thousand dollars there, and that we're going to put into that building, and it's still not going to be the space that they need. But until you find them another space. We've got to kind of maintain it. I think we have to turn around and sell it. If we find them another space, when you're selling it, well, the, you have to, you have to go find them a space. Yeah. I mean, you know, we can say, well, we, until we find them a space, well, you know, that could take ten years if you're not looking. Or, I mean, if you truly want to find them a space, you know, we could go look at the property. We could build them something, but it's going to take money. Uh, and. You know, we can't just, the further we keep kicking it down the road, we're just dumping money into these places, and yeah, it's probably long overdue, but at the same time, we're not going to get anything out of it. I mean, that building's 8,000 square feet. Yeah, I don't know what we get out of it. Technically, we only have one county department in that building. And we'd probably be lucky if we could get four hundred thousand dollars out of it. Well, people. And there's some parking and other stuff there, but there's no twelve people. She's talking about parking. Oh, oh parking. I'm sorry, parking. I thought you were talking about parking. No, they're talking about. Oh, no, that's twenty. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Okay. Twenty-four. 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 Twenty
thing to their seven bathrooms. Yeah, maybe they can get rid of a couple. Yeah. Maybe. They have a closet. Didn't he say he wanted to try just cleaning those? That was his recommendation after they were done with the construction. Okay. Just bringing in somebody and just having them do a good cleaning and, and see if, per chance, I, I've seen those bathrooms. I don't think just a good cleaning is going to do. Just the floor in the bathroom. Yeah. No, it's it's the sinks have some rust in them. There's like the lime rings around the stools. I mean, which you, you're not going to get up. Those floors are old linoleum floors. I mean, so it, it looks like something from the '60s. This is what it looks like. So, but it's the floor, and then it's a new sink on the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's not like you need to remove anything no, or anything no, like that. No, you're, you're just, just, just replacing those. I mean, there's epoxy floors that you can take up that linoleum and put down an epoxy type floor. I mean, that's the best way to do that. Mm -hmm. It's not especially what you do the ones where the kids use. It'd yeah. probably be a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're going to do at school. Be a lot, lot easier to clean. Mm -hmm. Don't have the grooves and it, you know, everything gets in. It's expensive. Yeah. Twenty-five thousand for floors? You got screwed. Well, it's like four different bathrooms. And the size of. Yeah, take all those partitions off. You gotta. We haven't. We just did. We haven't approved. Huh? Where at? At the school. <laughs> How many damn bathrooms do you got? You got partitions in your bathroom? <laughs> now what do you do? What do you do for transgender students? I just, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not big on the bathroom remodel thing. They cleaned up. We've got a whole bunch of other bathrooms that are in just as bad shape. We better go redo public works bathroom too then. You know, they're just terrible shape. I've been out there for more than I have. Well, then why, don't, why don't we, whenever it's done, just see if we can bring in. I'm okay with that. I mean, and just let know. them see, and if, if that if Michael's happy with that, if they do, then it saves us. But I guarantee that maintenance or somebody could replace the sink and the toilet. I mean, we got to take up the floor or something. You're going to have to do bit. something with the floors for those floors. Or, uh, you just walk on them. We're not eating on them. So do... You got some do kids over there that have some uh, uh, community service. Give them a brush and some Clorox bleach and... Get to work, kiddos. Well, I, think, I think I think I think Greg's tried the, the, some of. Those. Well, I, I'm sure, yeah. and of course, you know, it's different if the employees are using it. They should have their own bathroom. But the kids are using it. I mean, the kids are probably peeing on the floor and everything else, just on purpose. So, you know, why why have a nice bathroom for kids that are just going to tear it up? Are you guys going to agree and spend? Uh, we can get some dibs on. Somebody coming in and cleaning? Can I hear that from here too? I think if I think if that would make if that would satisfy Michael where we didn't have to do the bathroom. Well at for least that give us a truth. It would it would uh, I know Sam Radel does that now. He he's talked to me, he'd like to get and I mentioned a couple other names to Greg and he's so they're Crooks, yeah. But. Well, he could get some estimates. <laughs> yeah, he could get. Right. I'm not saying yes to it, but he yeah. can get some estimates. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, asphalt parking lot, I'd like to see what that's going to cost to. Okay, I'll wait for that. Hopefully, we can. If we do something with EMS, uh, um, that their vehicle, you know, we'll definitely maybe take their vehicle and put it over to the health or something. Well, I guess you need to talk about EMS vehicle first. Do you want to buy a new QRV? I'm struggling with that. I don't know if that's anything wrong with all that. But no, that no, they would be adding, supposedly adding additional QRV. And getting rid of the Explorer. That Explorer that, that my drives would be available somewhere else. He would take the old QRV and then a new QRV would come in. I don't. I don't understand that there's anything wrong with more piece drive. I know you can't transport somebody in it like you would the QRV, but I don't know why we need two QRVs. 
You have one on call. You have one out in the field or somewhere where the ambulance can't get to. All you need is the one. We don't run into that that often. So well, unless you can dispatch those instead of an ambulance to a call, you're going to be dispatching the ambulance anyway. That's what we've been doing. That's why I've been so frustrated. The, the QRV is supposed to get there and say, oh, never mind. Turn around, we don't need you. We can save some money. I think as we transition, though, I think, you know. That, 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 come, that comes out of there past that. I think it's a good idea. I'd like to see two QRVs out there running you know, as much as possible. But are you going to run? I guess my thought is if Mike's going to be in one, is it going to be running? I mean, I think two QRVs may be a good solution, but I think they need to be running all the time. And I don't know if Mike driving a QRV is going to get it out on the road as much as it's supposed to be. If we tell him he's have his butt in it, have his computer in it, there, there's, today and there's, there's, there's no reason there's no reason that they couldn't sit wherever all day long type on their computer and they're accessible all the time I mean there's no reason they even have to sit in Southridge so I mean if they need to go back there for something that's fine but I, I think to get two of them running with a better presence and more supervision on the, on the job it's assistance it's you know, when we're in the city, we get fire to help us. Once we step outside the city, we have no help whatsoever. So if they need a third person to help load or do whatever, or they have first responders, you have the fire departments, they show up at the well, outside most, the city limits too. Most so of the yeah. time, but most of the time, those first responders work jobs too. So it's not, it's not, it's not. The first yeah. responders are still going to be the first ones because a lot of them are working. Well, they have staff. At the fire departments that show up. The one down in Osage Bend, and I saw the QRV come in there or come by. And I was working at that, so I was trying to see what all the commotion was, so I followed it. Got down there, saw what happened. They had about six trucks out there in the field where an ambulance basically couldn't go, and then the QRV was there too. So they really did have plenty of help there. I, I, I mean, I think the QRV was a good idea. I don't really think it's doing anything that we have to have two of them for. Now, I could be wrong, if we have an ice storm, then you need about three of them. Or a big snow. You can, you, you can need three of them at that one time. Well, I think one's enough. We did have a rotation schedule. I remember six years of director of vehicle assigning a QRV to Now, I remember six years of director of vehicle assigning a QRV to Now, how many miles did he have on the... Oh, oh okay. I got it all yesterday. I don't disagree. I wouldn't mind having two if they're being if used they're for being what used, we were. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's my intended. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm so it's it's more of a direction from us uh, that so you see these running all the time. That's yeah. That's why I when I'm disagreeing with you. Yeah. I agree, but disagree on right. on that. So if we can figure out the direction we need to go with and exactly how it's going to be run. I don't think it needs to be sitting at, okay, I'll bring up Lowe's because I, I used to see it there a lot. I've not seen it there in right, the last several times, so well, yeah, I picked on that. Um, I, just, I just hate seeing You can, have, seeing you can have it at the jail. I mean, there, there, you know, uh, Mike's talked about keeping an ambulance there, the, but some of these calls over to, to uh, the towers, uh, that QRV might be able that might be all you need. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a fire fire truck that goes there regardless. The thing is, they have to dispatch the ambulance to it, and I understand that if that was my grandma and my mom were there and they fell down. If you don't dispatch it right away and you're trying to figure out if it's a true emergency or not, that one minute or two minutes or three minutes is essential. Well, but so there's when those calls come in, they they have a code. There's a code one, two, or three. Code three is life threatening, and it's automatic ambulance. And then code two is non-life threatening but pretty serious. And then code one could be a whole slew of things, but it's it's not a life threatening. It just but your son had his accident. Over. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so currently, the EMS director 
does he take his vehicle home? Yes. Do you still see that happening with the QRV, or do you see the QRV staying in service? It could be either way. It could be you know, whatever direction we want. I mean, I'm just looking at mileage. I mean, the mileage on the Explorer for being the age that it is is only $42,000. So, I mean, miles, uh, yeah. It, it would still be usable somewhere. It's right. just deciding on whether or not that QRV is the option that you want to use for the director. And I don't know that it's going to be cost effective if it's going to be traveling outside of service. Outside of like service. if he continues to take a vehicle home, if the, the second QRV is traveling home with him. But he's a more of a 24 hour on the call right position. If there would be a call, it would come in the middle of the night where they actually need additional support versus uh, I guess five type of director. You know, all right. Larry Larry does take his home back and forth. He's you know, twenty four though. Yeah. We have storms right. and stuff. Uh, so it's just it's a matter of how we want that Q R V to run. I'm not sure that it really run needs to run that much after six or seven o'clock. But I mean if we we're going to start adding people. A lot of people, if we start running, you know, we have two different supervisors that run our QRV seven days a week. You know, that will be uh, that run ten or twelve to run opposite shifts or whatnot. To run twelve hours a day. Uh, you know, that would take care of one QRV, and then Mike would run the other one. Anyway, we need some clear direction on how we want them to operate if we do that. But, uh, My thing is, is I mean, that's going to determine whether or not you think that it's more out of service for your men to move it somewhere else. It's what your direction is on that QRV and how you're going to use it. Right. Because it, it's got low miles, so it could either be used in ambulance service or we could repurpose it to the health department, but you need to have a clear direction on how you want those vehicles to work before you decide to take it out because it still has plenty of life left in it if you wanted to leave it at you. Right, so here, here, here's where I'm at with the QRV. I mean, it, it does Mike or no, anybody no good to have an explorer that you can't have certain equipment in it to do something. I mean, if, if one of them goes down, we're, we're down to zero, and uh, you know, or if Mike has to respond to a, a major incident or whatever, and we need all those tools, you know, just like having a truck full of tools, you got to have all the tools that you need. So, you know, it's just why have some other vehicle that's not outfitted? I mean, that, that just doesn't make any sense. That'd be like having an ambulance with half the stuff in it. Or having, or having a little ambulance for little people. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, 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 we're, 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 we're getting well, lately. Well, the people that are over 700 pounds. Yeah. It's not the little people, it's the I, bigger people. I mean, I think it has, uh, I think it, he's got a bag in it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, he's got radios, he's got some other things. But, and correct, he, he doesn't have the thing where he can transport uh, a patient in there. but. But it is equipped to respond to a call. He just can't transport the patient. I'm transport not sure on that. Patient. And definitely doesn't have all the uh, equipment, equipment like uh, shocking somebody or whatever, all the medicine. If, if it would take a cot, if you could use that to transport the, the mental patients and stuff like that, it might be more economic. If your own vision is for him to be on the road more and, and you want him to be responding to stuff, and that's that's what solves the the need it, yeah. But if your vision for him is to just uh, go and check out the situation, but if you want him to be actively involved in the situation, then QRV is. Well, I think his he's, he, his job is really more administrative. But there's going to be times when he could probably be. You know, we we probably could would need him. So in your so situation, though, Ben, would he need a QRV if he? Possibly, I mean, you wouldn't want it to be sitting there for the occasional call if you wanted to check a QRV, wouldn't you want it in service during those peak times? 
during the day if he's there at Southridge. Would he have to keep a vehicle there to be used? I mean, could he be using it during the day? That you could do that too. If you needed, if you felt like you really needed a QRV, then they could be available for the, the staff to yeah. go. I, I think he has time to respond. I, I mean, my job at times, this job or other job as an administrator, but at times it's hands off. And so, you know, if you're not doing anything, well, get in there, pitch in, get there, help out. You know, whether it's helping to load a barometric or whatever it is, patient, you know, or, or whatever it is, um, let's, let's dig in, let's let's get in there, let's work with our troops, see what they're doing. Uh, I'd like to get a count of what kind of calls we do get over at the high rise too, because I know the fire department says that that's the majority of their calls are over there. I think I had like a third off of there their calls but you just if you're saying they have a one two and a three assignment to them and just see you know really putting the qrv at, at the jail might be and we can if you can send if you can send that to, to half the calls at, at the high rises that's a lot better than an ambulance with those, those have reduced i mean we had the housing authority come in a little bit two years ago and we had concerns there and uh, they said that those have dramatically come down. Um, the part of it was their pull chains that they had over there. Yeah. People would accidentally pull the pull chain or whatever, and next thing you know, it's an emergency call coming. So. I told them if they come on there every time, we'll start building for everyone, so they started. Yeah, uh, being downtown, there's just about oh, every sure. day you hear you hear them going through town. And that was part of the reason that we brought the uh, east truck out of the fire station down here is because a lot of their calls are going. Yeah, I like I like the idea of having that twenty fire. You can definitely hold off on the QRV purpose until later and all the rest of the stuff can continue on to use as that Well we're getting down in the weeds with DMS right now. Right. Yeah. Well, well it's it's just you needed to decide that one before you talked about the health department. So if the, yeah, if the Ford Explorer true. was an option for health department, that would save us from having to purchase an additional vehicle. And you don't have to make a decision on health department either. It's a placement holder. We can get Michael Moulton in. He can do it. Well, I mean, I know the health department, well, they can have some cover all these things get lots of miles. But, you know, they can, they can keep using it a little bit longer. I'm pretty much good with all the other stuff on the EMS. I mean, but we we are going to have to get down the weeds uh, if we are going to make some changes and some adjustments there, and uh, see if we're going to need other capital items as well at some point. On EMS, mm -hmm. where's EMS in that? Kind of down towards the end. A lot of theirs is like you know the second part of the Lucas device Which one? is the next. Yeah, that's what we have. We've already helped. We've already approved I mean, oh, that. I didn't know that. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. The Lucas. Oh, we, we, we bought the first round, you know. And, and we, this is a second round, but we still approve that. I mean, um, and the same way with the COTS. I mean, yeah, we split it over two years. That's. <laughs> we've told them that we were probably agreeable to that, but that doesn't bind us. <laughs> Or they may hold their prices for something too. So if we're needing a vehicle over at Health, it would make sense instead of buying a brand new one to take the mics, transfer it over there, and then to go ahead and get an actual vehicle that can be a QRV. That way if we decide to put it into a rotation like we're talking, we have it it's set up. Technically, we're adding half a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Just leave it in there, and then we can. We decide not to do it. We get that money to spend on other capital stuff. So I want to talk more about it. Right. So the nice thing about the QRV is that an ambulance can't run without two people. It can't. 
can't be in service without two people. Uh, the RV can't run mm -hmm. one person. Mm -hmm. So you, know, you need a little assistance or whatever, they can run. But you can't just have some one person jump in an ambulance and go. Well, that's where the what discussion needs to come into. To, to transport those, you know, there there one driver and then have a... Probably would be enough room in there to sit back there and administer. But that's where the discussion is. Really that much. Mike doesn't need to be in a QRV. I see Mike Moore as a, he can be in a... Well, he's a demonstrator, but he's... What I'm saying though is he doesn't need to be in a QRV. If he's sitting in a meeting up here in a commission meeting, and there's a QRV parked out there along the street for three hours, that doesn't make sense to me. That QRV should be sitting somewhere manned. And so I think Mike can be in a, a Kia to drive around to meetings and drive back and forth at home. I don't think QRV needs to be used for that purpose. So that's why I struggle with that, but we gotta decide if we're gonna do something or we're gonna take his and give it to the health department. So Well and that's where I was kinda of coming from at first. I mean his explorer is working for what he's doing currently. If you still see him Right. Just running back and forth to different places, you might as well leave the Explorer there, continue to use it because it has low mileage, and then if you wanted to add a QRV, you could. Yeah, I knew that's what the decision you were wanting us to make. But if you're talking about getting rid of it anyway, then of course the health department is wanting one and it would work there. Well, it's the same. I mean, it's going what was the health department wanting? I mean, I know they got a truck. They had twenty-four thousand dollars, I think. I think they were just for wanting a, a smaller life. SUV. They yeah. were wanting something similar to the Ford Escape, Escape that they currently have. They have some problems with the type last one. That's the one that was on. Yeah. Well, they had two of those at one time. Well, they replaced the one that was having the problem last year with the truck, and okay, then this that is the other one that is the same. It has Amy. higher mileage. And of course, she had asked about getting an environmental supervisor or something, right? Yeah. Would that person need a vehicle too, or what? I think they have, uh, you know, they call it just whoever needs to use it. Use some motor pool, yeah. like a motor pool type, yeah. Right and the pool, one that, they're pool vehicles. Yeah. If Chris needs it to go do some on site waste treatment system inspections and stuff, because that's somebody asked me that too. What do they need a truck for? Yeah. Well, you start sticking stuff down in a sewer or a lagoon or something, and you want you want that in the car with you. <laughs> put it on high and drill. So I think we should put a number in there for at least the health department until we decide what. I would at this time rather get the health department one because I'm not gonna. I, I don't. I'm not gonna put a QRB for Michael to use if we're gonna get one. Then let's get another one and figure out how we're on that rotation best you side. Mike's got plenty of miles yeah. he can still use on this SUV. Well, 41,000. 42,000. Yeah. Well, he can get another 240,000 out of the problem. Yeah, that's enough. Two, I've got 280 on my truck, so I'm going to sit there and preach about it. I'm driving around. I've run over enough trees with it. I should get a new one, too. Well, we'll go back to just the capital and sales I can't do tax. Truck. Yeah, that's why I'm sour. So again, you can see there's very few accounts, so it's just a matter of placeholders. Uh, so we talked about 150 in utilization of those 250. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So change that one. Do you want to keep the community? Oh, 15 million. God, we get down. I can't. We'll balance it. So the other one you probably should talk about is contingency. Do you want to keep a four hundred fifty thousand dollar contingency? Because then you can just plug into capital improvement what you have left. I think like two hundred thousand of that would be best. I guess it depends. If if a roof or an HVAC system goes bad and you didn't plan to replace it, what would you need to replace something big like that? Right, well, and money. if we don't have the money in capital, we take it out of reserves. Right, so that's what you need to keep in reserves, is, is if I had a big project that happened in the middle of the year and something completely went out, what would I need to... But in turn, there's lots of projects that we could be doing. This is the last of a five-year sales tax. Right, we, need we to don't do want to set with We need to do with as many as we can. Yeah. Right, so we're going to... Yeah. Right. So, I mean, if a major expense happens, we have healthy reserves that we can 
paid if they did. Right? Right. Well, we got two million dollars sitting out there somewhere. Yep. Yeah, so I'm thinking two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand in contingency is probably. Mm -hmm. I two fifty. So. That's fine. Thank you. But I mean, yeah. Uh, there's no, there's just no a, point keeping four fifty in there and then yeah. not spending it. So, so then you can change your fine. capital. Do you want to give me some Okay, so basically double sales tax. I mean, again, that doesn't give anybody approval to go out and buy all those things right. in my mind unless you uh, tell me now. No. Okay. So on that spreadsheet, did you kind of highlight some of the yeah. things that we talked about? Yeah. What was the total that we had? Because I think we need to spend. Like I said, this is the fifth year of the sales tax. I think we need to spend uh, do as many things as we can this year to try to get that down. Oh, you didn't highlight it, Brandon. I did highlight it. Can we put some in a fund for the old jail, whatever we're going to do there, to start building up something to be able to do something with it eventually? You can put it in there, and then if you do have emergency, I don't want to say that it's necessarily going to be used just for that, but it's going to be a big dollar project, and then it's kind of like a reserve with a well, I purpose. See yeah, I see what you're getting at, but I see our reserves or the general revenue fund. That Okay, we'll go a different direction then. Uh, health department, if we're looking at moving them, and I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow by any means, but if we find the right thing that comes up in two years, then we want to pull the trigger. We don't have enough money to sit there and go get it. I mean, that's kind of the intention right now is to try to find them something different. Right. We never did set a price tag. Do we earmark something for that for facilities? So the key thing to look at there is most of your special revenue funds, like the sales tax funds, are restricted in total. So they're restricted for capital improvements, public works is restricted for public works. So you can um, earmark money in those funds and it's still restricted. When you get to general funds, if you would decide to say, I'm going to put this much aside for a health department renovation, you are committing those funds. Because when you all vote on the budget, you're taking a vote to commit those funds to that line item. Could you just do something that just says county facilities, which could be either the old jail or the health department? <laughs> you, you could. The same respect, though. Like, if you decided down the road that I need to spend that on something else, Computers for whatever reason. Right. Some you're, up. You've kind of committed those funds, because general fund is unrestricted at the moment. We don't restrict anything in there unless we are going through and saying, yes, this is in your budget to be used on the telephone. You know, it, at that point, it's... And I'm fine with that. I'm fine with saying, you know what, if I don't run next year or I don't win next year, I put $200,000 in this fund just for doing something with facilities for improving the workplace or whatever you want to call it. Workplace improvements, workplace expansion. And that's fine. I'm just telling so, you because when it comes to the budget, it's one thing, but when it comes to financial statements, it's something different. So that fund balance at the end would have to be re reported as a portion of it being committed. Where right now it's unrestricted and you report it. I'm just leave it in Because there, there's different levels. There's committed, assigned, it, and it all depends on how you all go through and actually vote on things. But it could be seen that if you are voting on the budget to be approved with that amount in there, you are at that point committing that money. So and you would actually have to formulate a you say, formal vote to take it out of the in infrastructure. And your environmental uh, restricted your obligation. Yeah. Which, you know, it's okay. 
I would rather I didn't obligate it. I would rather just just uh, say that we we're building reserves to do future county facilities or whatever. Uh, just the way it's, it's not restricted, but have some kind of intent of you know we realize these are some issues. And we, we're well, we know that somewhere down the road we're going to have to do some right. health department. Right. We know somewhere down the road we're going to have to do something for jail. This is the one we highlighted was only 147,000. That's all. Yeah. That now that's not including that's just your sales tax. That's not EMS. That's no. That's not the computer stuff. Yeah, that's not the computer stuff. That was just the. We have those three there in blue. Those three. And that one. And that one. You get those couple roofs in there. No. I was gonna say. You want roofs at the car? Or one more roof in the car? No. That's about time to be in hell. Let's, no, there's also one let's on the annex. When Greg gets back, let's, yeah, have, so let's that, have Greg. So the hell, the annex, and Carnegie. Okay. I mean, I think there's something that, I'm not saying that we're going to need to do them, but I think we ought to at least look at the, yeah, the rubber roof. Yeah, rubber roof. 32,000. Oh. I think those are just ones that we at least ought to bid to see where they come in. But it would be nice if we could bid all three of them together because yeah, I think we're going to get a better, you know, it's a bigger project. We get a better number. And uh, so. I think you probably need to think about the same thing if you're thinking about the HVAC stuff. I mean, I think if you can group some of those buildings together into one large project, that you might get a better number. Mm -hmm. Well, and that doesn't include any of the projects you're going to carry forward here that are open. Right. Yeah. Right. And you're up to. Um, and we're always going to have some that's going to shoot the craps unexpectedly. Right. So you have to add another 700 and some thousand to that. Excluding the 75. Well, that's not 7 anymore. Is it? Do you pay that though? Yeah. Well, whatever. Right. It still might matter. Right. I pay half of that one and some of those. Now that I know that, I can give you a more of a suggestion. Besides capital, we have um, salary, Work. and we also have. Are, are you guys want to talk about any other capital before we move on? Well, I'm just going to ask. Uh, <laughs> Public Works has been renting um, equipment, and I hate it. And I truly hate it. So, is there is it possible to use some of these funds to help them purchase something? Or Loan it to me, you mean? Well, didn't they say they were talking to the people they're renting from for like a lease purchase option? Or Hell yeah. Oh, they got yeah. So we've been we've been leasing for a long time. Yeah. We did that already. Yeah. We've been leasing for three years, three thousand dollars a month. So it's thirty six thousand dollars a year. So we've spent a hundred grand in the last three years on lease equipment. Two different pieces, granted. Maybe more than that. And I don't know what the total would be, but we got that big loader and then we got uh, the excavator. So but I just, I just don't see continuing the lease there. Are they, I haven't looked at them. I know it's either those that, are they leasing for a large portion of the year? I mean, are we? A whole year, a whole year, yeah. Yeah, that, that's happened this year. Usually we have to Usually it goes back, year. but yeah. I mean, the excavator, especially, they just keep it. I mean, they, they use it a lot. Um, but at the same time, you know, the, the loader, they use it all winter. I mean, they get it in November and it stays till April or whatever. Um, 
I usually leave that up to Larry and them guys because I have issues with leasing too. Well, now we're leasing trucks at the uh, sheriff's department too, uh, but he did his homework on that. So, well, we'll try it. So, sometimes leasing, I guess, is a, there is an advantage to it. The one that we've had for a year, though, I think is we really need to look at. Yeah. Because well, if it looks like we'll need it for a year, or even if it's sitting there for two months that we're not using it, is it worth just buying it then? Right. Well, that's where I'm at. I just, uh, yeah. you know, I, I'm, how long have I been bringing this up and talking about it? It's been two years. Uh, and, you know, we, we need to find a way to either buy something that's, you know, at least I own or, or something. But Well, have we done any cost benefit? I mean, like what the cost of a new one is? And right now we're not paying any maintenance or anything like that on the ones we're leasing, correct? Right. So, I mean, we probably need to sit down and compare the two and see at what point is the lease well, not, I, not I, a benefit. Yeah. I guarantee you it's not a benefit. Well, within their sales tax, too, they do have the uh, heavy equipment. Now, I, that was just a list of what they had already anticipated for next year. Right. Um, so they're, they're going to, you know, take a lot of stuff out They use that a lot. They use their skids here a lot. Uh, you know, but even though the stuff that they do use a lot, they're using this big excavator a lot. And they've got all the equipment to tow it around and move it. And uh, so, yeah, it's, yeah, it's probably a couple hundred, three hundred thousand dollars piece of equipment, but that's why we're paying that much in rent, too. You know. I mean, I don't know. Depends if you want to get your project done here. They need to find them within their budget to purchase them. If you're talking about spending it out of our 50% of the capital, then I think we become very excited. We have a lot of buildings that are under care for that we need to care for too. And the next five years sales tax, you know, we still have to, you guys still have to decide that. Right. You know, they well, have I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I mean, we've been kicking are we leasing that? Projects. Are we leasing that by the year, or do we have, do we have like a by the mice. Okay. So you can like quarterly. You can. Well, no, it's, not it's, it's just a. You, know, you can just call them anytime and they'll come get it and take it back. I mean, it's, it's probably not even agreement. It's just you keep it. You have it all month. It's with you for a month. So. Oh no, I gotta switch back before that. Anyway, I mean, there's a lot of these capital projects that we've been looking at. I've been on this list for three years, so we've addressed some of the bigger ones. But some of them are still there. You know, we, we could try to do them all, but I don't think all of them are needed. Well, I guess the biggest one that's in question still in the old sales tax is the Capitol Avenue Streetscape. Yeah, that's supposed to. It, that's supposed to happen. It is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the last I talked to Eric said the city was maybe having a hard time coming up with their... Street their, I don't think we were doing that. That's one of the city I county... I think that's the last city county... One of the city county projects, projects is... is uh, I think that's the last one of the city county cooperative. We've uh, never committed to that. I don't so, think so, because yeah. I won't go for a streetscape. I ain't paying for, we haven't committed to any of those. I ain't paying for park benches and my street No, no, I, that's what that, 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 that's what that streetscape that is. We'll buy trees. No. We can buy trees. But they put them on the list, and, you know, but they never, until they're ready to come ask us for money, they don't ever include us. So. I mean, it's. I don't know. We haven't we haven't agreed to anything to be designed on that, have we? I, I, I don't know. Some you guys did before. I, I mean, I think it was on the list. That was there's on their wish whole, list. There's a whole lot of on the list. There's a wobble extension and all kinds of yeah. other stuff. Well, she's looking at it. I'm just wondering if you still on you that kind of stuff. Capitol Avenue Street is $100,000. And 
soil conservation. I think we have to do that one. That's the only one that I want to do. I think crime stuff is, like I said, I, beneficial. I think it's a great organization, but uh, I think, you know, if law enforcement wanted to pay people for crime stoppers, that'd be great. So the reason you're seeing zeros for crime stoppers in the historical society is because last year we moved those to economic development, not public welfare. So they're actually the that's where Smooth's at, too, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Crime Stoppers is in economic development, too. Yep. Girl. The only thing we left in here was things that we thought were truly somehow. Um, I didn't remember Crime Stoppers being moved to there. What is Manpower too? Service? That they're not for profit. Uh, manpower uh, Service is where you see it. Homemaker. Homemaker. Oh. Homemaker Service. Homemaker Service. Yeah. We go through this every year and I always struggle with it, but these are some services that are provided that by statute we are allowed to pay them to provide. It's not a significant amount. We talked about putting a cap on it. I don't know if we want to do that. My personal thing is it's always been the the amounts. Well, uh, this is from what I gather, this has been a commission wish list or whatever that it's just grown. So the commissioners have picked new organizations and it's just grown. That, that's true, but the probably the ones you're seeing on this page right here, other than the Art Council, um, have been on the list for more than 10 years, I know, because they've been on here ever since I've been here. So, uh, I mean, I know those those top four in soil conservation have been... Yeah. The ones when I started, Homemaker Healthcare, April Learning, Senior, and then the soil. So habitat was habitat. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And you don't have the uh, downtown service. Or did we move that back? So the ones that truly have been around for a long time in those schools. Which one? Home, uh, homemaker services, able learning, senior nutrition, and soil conservation. Paid in 15. What happens if they want to be adoption agency? 
Just remember that request. request. I don't Maybe. think they did not request this year. And that's, I mean, that's why I'm seeing the ones that don't the request it. Yeah, I'm just wondering, you know, we send, we send them out letters, right? I, I almost say we do better just to, to put a lump sum that we can spend and then they have to make a request. And be it for economic or be it for uh, the you can do it for both of them. You have to do it for economic too. Uh, it'd, it'd be cleaner if they'd come, you know, come to us and make the request. I think we just need to give them some guidance. I mean, and like, well, when you send them a letter and say, hey, you know, we've got seven thousand dollars. We did not we didn't do that. But at the same time, we didn't say, you know, we didn't give them any guidance. So like the senior nutrition. Center, for example, I'm sure ten thousand dollars is a large portion of their budget. Yeah. So to just stop and say, nope, we're not going to do it this year. I think that you need to give them some sort of heads up to find other avenues to find those funds or uh, something. I don't think you can just. We can. I I, can, I, I agree I with what you're saying to a certain extent, and I had a long discussion discussion with a lady that's actively involved with it. She was pleading her case for ten thousand dollars, and I, I said I agree with you. But I said there's a lot of people that come to the senior nutrition center and eat lunch that could afford to go eat lunch somewhere else, but are just coming because it's, it's a, a social. Lunch. Well, but they're coming because it's a social. Well, and it's it's two dollars or it's three dollars or whatever. Uh, and, uh, and I said, I said, you know, are you renting that space at Capitol Mall? And, and of course, you know, they are. They're renting that space. So, you know, I mean, I get it. I get that they probably do a great service, and probably the better service that they do is delivering meals to people that can't get them. Uh, but if you can physically get in the car and drive there, you could probably afford the $5 meal or whatever. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. But, I mean, what about all the... So that senior nutrition center is at the mall. What about all the other food establishments at the mall? I mean, we're giving them ten thousand dollars so that they can keep their prices down. Well, if I gave another food establishment ten thousand dollars, well, maybe they could lower their prices too. I mean, I could argue both sides. So, I, like I said, there's there's all kinds of deserving organizations, boys and girls clubs great organization but you know at the end of the day you can't support them all or maybe you can no, Dad. no maybe you can no, no, you know no, no, I money back I, but I mean you know I got four, I got four kids to feed at home so I can't support them all and I think everybody else does too you know they're looking at, at a limited <laughs> limited amount of funds and you know we, we've done good to keep our taxes low
you would have to sign a contract. Right. You definitely are not even thinking about it. And my suggestion is if you're going to cut all of those out of there, we move proper funeral to 127 and do away with Department 143. 